Welcome to Revolver Live, the gaming podcast that says forget the past. The future belongs to the nerds. Revolver Live is also a conversational podcast with six revolving topics. You can be a part of the show by submitting your topics for consideration at revolvergamescast at gmail.com. We go live every Sunday at 4 o'clock p.m. Eastern at Twitch. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> at twitch.tv forward slash Briar Rabbit. The video is then shared on YouTube at Briar's channel and my channel, Beastly Gamer. We're also available on Podbean, iTunes, or wherever you do your podcasts and wherever you like to listen. And with that, welcome back to Revolver Live episode 43, three weeks away. Welcome back, guys. It's been it's been a, a true weight on my heart. It feels like the weight's been lifted now that I see you guys. Welcome back. Same. You guys Good to be back, man. I'd like to uh, thank my manager uh, and my accountant. Uh, but most most of all, uh, the girl at Starbucks who gets my cold brew coffee just right. Just right. What's, what's, what's just right on your cold brew? I just I have to know. I feel like if, uh, if I know how you like cold. it, I know you. Makes sense. <laughs> it is good to be back, boys. What is happening? Right? It's been Everybody too long. Everybody looks good. We, we look rejuvenated. We look fresh. We look ready to, to mingle. I'm, saying. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, Beasley. Me and Wilson may have cheated a little bit in the interim. Well, explain. We may have done a little side thing. Oh, uh, yeah, I I heard about that. Okay, all right. I just want to you know get it out there. I want to you know put yeah. that out there. Make sure that there's no nothing being hidden. But we may have it's, done it's, a, a you know a, another podcast together. A, a smaller one, probably. You know. Uh, I mean. Yeah, very you know, small, very small. Listen, obscure. let me let me tell you like this, okay? Just like I tell <laughs> Kate, do it, do whatever you want to do. But as long as I see you on Sunday, we cool. <laughs> That's what you tell Kate. <laughs> yeah. Hey. <laughs> I'm okay she with here. that. She here. Shit. <laughs> That's all that mattered to me. Oh my God! Welcome back, guys. It's been too long. I'm really happy to see you guys. Uh, episode 43 of Revolver Live is going to be centered. On a little thing that happened a couple of weeks ago, E3 2018. It's come and gone. This is going to be the postmortem uh, of what happened at E3. Uh, the things that really got us excited. We're not going to go tit for tat through every single announcement. It would just take too long. And, you know, this is a two-hour show. So we're going to kind of uh, congest it and uh, put it into our own words and talk about the things that kind of got us moving on the show floors. So I'm going to need a definition on congest it. Squeeze together. Oh, All let right. me just say, how about consolidate? We're, consolidate. We're gonna consolidate. Okay. <laughs> Fuck. Yo, it's been too long, for real. I, like, we basically missed E3, right? Like, we didn't do a show during E3, but I know I was watching, like, basically every press conference, and then, like, afterward, like, listening to all the, you know, the hot takes of, like, you know, what was on the show floor, what was actually playable, and stuff like that, uh, but... It was weird not having the show during E3. You know, it was weird not having the show. Yeah. Uh, I really yeah, missed it. Uh, and, and, of course, last week, for people who don't know, we would have had a show last week, but I was entertaining family. My uncle from Ohio came down, and he stayed with us, and we took him around, and we had a great time. Yeah. Uh, we show, were going to do the show just me and Wilson, but I found out that I had to go to a party. <laughs> It's amazing I, was like, how well, things I was like, they're busy. I guess I'll grind competitive in Destiny too. <laughs> I'm sorry you had to go through that, Wilson. <laughs> it, was, it was a good day, actually. It was, okay, we were, we were on point. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I kind of mentioned pre pre show during the pre show uh, that uh, Kate and I kind of fell into the Destiny trap. Uh, it started yesterday. Uh, we're really excited about what I guess the reset will have for us because we're really starting to figure out for the first time, really, what we should be doing in the game. Uh, we went car shopping yesterday. Uh, we didn't get, get anything just yet, but we wanted to see what was out there and kind of narrow down the prices we wanted and the plans that we wanted. And uh, <laughs> when we were out looking at cars, uh, you know, Kate and I decided when we got home, we were going to start a game that we hadn't played yet. And so we were going to come home, uh, feed the kids, have a good time, and then uh, play Monster Hunter... Uh, what is it? Monster Hunter World? Mm -hmm. I think it's the name. We haven't even loaded that game up yet oh no no we never even started it never even made a character yet and i bought it when it came out so it's it's oh, been fuck. waiting yeah so it's been a lot of stuff you know, Shit, at this point you might as well wait till it comes out on pc then we'll, no we're gonna play it on playstation so we can play it together, <laughs> right? you're not gonna keep doing this to me. is there not gonna be cross play with playstation and pc that'd be amazing playstation don't cross play shit i don't know that's not true they did rocket league they did uh 
They've done a few games. Well, they'll they'll they'll, they'll kind of dibble and dabble with PC, but they're not playing nice with with their uh, we'll tease their it. contemporaries. They like to dip they're their not, balls in it, but they won't go like full insertion. No, no, no just just the tip, just the <laughs> just tip. The tip. <laughs> That's play so safety. Just the, the tip. tip. Yeah, that's, that's, they, they, that's they why Beasley said just the tip, and he has like five kids. <laughs> so you know I know what the fuck I'm talking about. So, so when we got home, uh, Kate was in, in the dining room taking care of the kids, and I came into the studio, and I sat down, and I loaded up my PlayStation, and I looked at the games, and something told me to load up Destiny. Destiny load it 2. up. Yeah, so I, was, I, I started Destiny 2, and I opened it up, and I was looking at my two characters, and I, I called her in here and said, play Destiny with me. And we started going and we started doing the uh, Nightfall. And then we did the uh, exotic, stri- I mean, the heroic strikes. And we did Crucible. And, and we, ha- we, we got home at 11 o'clock. We started playing the game at noon and we went to bed at 1 a.m. Shit. Damn. That's a Destiny <laughs> session. <laughs> Tell me about it. Right? And so, so, uh, you know, we talked about it during our playthrough yesterday. We were just having so much fun with just uh, one of our characters. You know, getting what? Late, what? Late. What is it? What changed for you? I think that when when Wilson came and joined us for that nightfall, and uh, helped us get over that hump of that mid, uh, what, what were we at? Three forty-five, Wilson. And we yeah, understood. You were, you, were, you were at that that wall, which yeah, was yeah, and it was really really hard for us to do anything else. It was like everything we did, we didn't get anything that pushed us any further. And then when we finally had the third and, and we were able to complete it, and Wilson, of course, is very, very helpful. And we saw that, okay, wow, this really incrementally helped us. And we were able to go back and we did a nightfall ourselves after Wilson uh, helped us out. Kate and I did a nightfall by ourselves after that. I may have jumped in and helped you, but I'd like to think that it was the Ikelios sniper rifle with the arc burn on the soul who could not hang. I just. <laughs> Good once night. I get box once I get box breathing going on that thing, it's just pop 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 pop, oh, just rocking them, and uh, that yeah, that worm drops like like a tremor, yeah, yeah, like a, like yeah, a graboid, true. just poof. and anaconda. Uh, yeah, but when Kate and I uh, started understanding, you know, that these things need to be done for you to see gains in the game and how fun it is to to change your character and, and feel more powerful and to go into these these places that that previously were just unbeatable. You could not do it. And then yeah. see just just two or three power points, how that changes the meta. It, may, it changes the way the game is played, the way that you feel in these situations. It's just been really damn exciting. So we got up this morning at 8, and uh, we came in here and started playing. And uh, I was going to do the Beastly Thought show at noon, and that fell through at the very, very, very last minute. And I looked at her, I called her back in here and said, let's get back on Destiny. So I've been on Destiny all day. We've done almost all the, the possible... Uh, events that we can do this week besides raids and of course we can go into iron banner but uh i'm super excited about next week about the reset about getting these characters up i would think me the way i've been thinking about destiny doing it with one character will kind of burn you out but it only made me want to get in there with my other characters and get them to that same fucking place so now we're all, all my characters at 354 355 light I'm yeah warm mine are you yeah we are awesome. things to do. All and, and my characters are 385 except my Titan, which is 384. Oh, I got all the EP weapons. I got all the trials. Yeah, stuff. I haven't gotten one of them yet. I've gotten my character to rank 35 Iron Banner with all the ornaments. Uh-huh. I've, I've yeah, faction rally there? coming up next week, but I don't even know if I'm going to participate in the faction rally. Like the other two. Uh, guys, real quick. Um, oh, that catalyst. T- today, Kate and I really needed help. Uh, doing the heroic strikes on our secondary characters to actually get, you know, start leveling up. And I did go to the Warren and I asked for help. Uh, and I, I asked a few people. But the person Where did you came go? and helped. Did you go to the Discord? No, I just went right in PlayStation, you know, oh. to our clan. Oh, okay. And the Gin Giraffe uh, came through and uh, a, a very kind gentleman from South Africa. And uh, he said, I'm from South Africa. I said, I'm from there too, someplace. And right from there, we hit it off. And this guy was there to help us and, and get us over the hump. And he was very instrumental in Kate and I uh, having seeing success with our secondary characters today. Jen Giraffe, thank you so much. Much love from the United States and South Af- Africa. Good people and a great Destiny player. Thank you so much to the Warren for the help that you guys give us. Awesome yeah. game. I'm loving it. Yeah, man. So, I don't so, know why I'm saying this shit. 
I shouldn't be saying it, but I'm having so much fun. <laughs> it's funny that you're talking about Desi because I'm like getting to the point right now. I, I I don't even think I'm as far into War Mind as Wilson is because I haven't gotten any of like the uh, the Achilles weapons. Uh, but I'm kind of like seeing okay, what am I going to start playing for summer break here? Because like I'm kind of getting that in that mood where I kind of want like um like a PUBG break like I took last year where I just kind of oh, yeah. I expanded my horizons for the summer. I streamed some other games. Like I got you know, I got away from Destiny for a little bit and I'm I'm getting that feeling right now. Like it's you know, I'm really excited for the Forsaken that's coming out in September, but like I'm kind of getting to that f- place where let's see what else is out there. Let's see what else I can play. You know, there like E3 really kind of, it got me excited for video games in general, right? So now I want to play some video games in general. <laughs> Did I mute you guys? I can't hear you guys, either one of you guys. No, I had myself. Oh, you, you guys keep muting your microphones. Uh, he, he was <laughs> coughing, I was farting. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's I'm amazing. Kidding, <laughs> He's not kidding. That's great. <laughs> I feel- I feel you, man, because I'm to the point now to where the only thing that I need to do, and I've gotten the new raid done with you guys on PC, that one run that we got in. I need to do it on console and get the two weapons out of there. Do the two I'll, remaining, I'll go with you. two go remaining, with you. <clears throat> two remaining faction rallies. That'll you know, so I can get the the last two catalysts, and then mm-hmm. after that, man, the only the last thing I have to do. Is go after that Redrix's Claymore that yeah, big I do want to do that, man. Like it's, I really want to do that, but I don't want to do it on PlayStation. Tough. Like I want to do it on PC. Yeah, and dude, you, I, I can't you love them both equally? I can. Can't you I do go love to the console that has everybody on it. Shit. I look, Beastly. I'll be completely honest with you. Is that now that I'm so invested in my characters on the PC, it's not that it's not even the frame rate, it's not the controller. I could get over both of those things. When I play for an hour, I like forget about the frame rate altogether. Uh, and I can play with a mouse and keyboard if I want to on PS4. It's just repeating the grind. Like maintaining six characters for me, I wasn't able to do it in Destiny One with P- PS4 and Xbox One, and I'm not able to do it now with the PC and the PS4. It's that's just as I understand. You know, that. it's the fact of the matter. If there was cross save, fuck why, man. Why isn't there? I I can I help know. you out with this because I too am looking for a summer game to play, and I like playing Destiny Two. So if you'd like me to get your console character up. I would be more than that. Oh. <laughs> I love playing this game. Plus, I get to walk in the shoes of Briar Rabbit. I'm going to teabag everyone. Oh, yes. <laughs> be mean to everybody. People say, hey, Briar, how you doing? Say, fuck you. Fuck you, toxic. man. Eat it. Eat a dick. Yeah. Just, just be toxic. But like, um, Bagadix.com, motherfucker. It's, it's crazy because like the way that competitive ranked works is that you'd think, like, you know, your first... 10 15 games are going to be pretty easy you know what i mean and then it starts rolling into getting sweaty no right off the bat you are matched up against people with with similar kds similar skill base and shout outs to uh earthquake weather some of the boys we got sweaty the other night in competitive it was a uh, swag panda and big soup and uh, Big we we got matched <laughs> up against pure names, chill. we got matched up against pure chill like that sounds three, like a rap group. <laughs> yeah, we, the we NWA got anyway, revival <laughs> band comes out with <laughs> Big Soup Panda and <laughs> yeah. yo, they were some straight killers, man. Especially Swag, he was he was really good. Uh, but we ran into pure chill like three four games like dude it was because we got ddos for the first time and my yeah pop my ddos cherry that was an experience that was a roller coaster they of fucked emotions. up they that should be based on it should be its own matchmaking criteria right it's like if you're low level in in that playlist then you should be matching other people that are low level in that playlist so that the the tiers of the of that playlist actually separate who's how good you are as opposed to just being matched up against KD. Yeah, we, we had a really good run, man. Um, I, we made like several hundred points towards our rank. Like we were on a really good roll. Like we we 
won a game against some of these crazy teams, lost a game. Like we were kind of ping ponging back and forth. And uh, then we get DDoS and I get a 10 minute penalty and find 100 points off my score for getting DDoS, which That's yeah. was fucked. Needless to say, it took the wind out of my fucking sails after that. But we came back, played another game, came back strong. Probably the strongest game we played was the game after our little temporary ban got lifted for backing out early. And, uh, sometimes yeah, you so, do that. I mean, sometimes you have to do that. It, it was tough though. Like yeah, usually it, you uh, get rewarded for pulling out early. Yeah, I know. Basically, you wouldn't know what we're talking about here. <laughs> I think that's a speaking clean on right now. Right over his head. Yeah. <laughs> we're speaking, we're speaking Elvish. Um, but like it, so I'm like 500 points in and I've got like 1500 points more to go after like, that was like one night of grinding. We got up to like roughly 500 or I did They're way ahead of me, but it, it's going to be a long grind, man. So I'm hoping to just knock that out. And like Briar said, find some, some good summer games to play. And, yeah. Cause I'm going to go balls deep into forsaken we're, dude. We're going to yeah, forsaken. You know, that I had no idea that the fans of Destiny were as, as feverish as they were at E3. I did some reaction videos, and I did the Forsaken reaction. I didn't expect it to even go anywhere. But that was, like, the biggest video I've done in a very long time. The Forsaken? Yeah. No My shit. reaction to that, yeah, I mean, just kind of blew up, you know, and just over 10,000 views in, like, a matter of hours. It was kind of crazy. But um, that really, you know, kind of got me in, invested more into the story. Characters I genuinely like seeing shit go down in a very bad way. You know, Heavy Metal Mama came along and told me she's a beastly the tears. I said, I understand. She's like, why the fuck are you not crying? I was like, I don't know. Can we, can we, but, can we talk about that trailer real quick while we're on the subject? Like, we yeah. might as well. Like, dude, no, I, I am, refuse to acknowledge it, frankly. I am shook. <laughs> It didn't happen, brother. It didn't happen. I it's like it's it. like Indiana Jones and the Crystal Skull. I just refuse the, the it's fact that it exists. It's, it's, it's the Star Wars prequel. It's, Star yeah. Wars prequel. it's like, dude, it, somebody posted, um, my friend Chibi Kim uh, posted a, what was it, 10 or 8 stages of grief, grief. or whatever. <laughs> And you could see it happening on Twitter. Everyone going through the stages of grief uh, over this trailer. And dude, I was one of them. I'm not gonna lie. Like I was straight affected by this when I saw I that. You were about to say a few. No. Dude, we he's were... the only character that anybody gives a shit about in the whole only game. One. I get. He's I the get only one. They, I get why they have to do it, but it's I don't have to like it necessarily. Like I understand why they're doing it, but like. So I think me, I think there's a I think there's an issue with uh, them and uh, what's his name who plays the character Nathan Fillion Nathan Fillion I honestly do I think there's an issue between those two there there was like uh, some rumors that he like unfollowed somebody at Bungie and like I heard like it was like right as soon as I heard it, it was like why would you kill your most popular character are you paying too much to Nathan Fillion <laughs> like is he like is he, does he cost too much Yeah and I think it might be that. Like I honestly think it might be but, that, but, yeah. but it might be worth it if they're paying him more than the other voice actors because he's the only character that people have really connected with. And, and yeah, or, man. Look, look at everybody. Look at you guys. Attach it to attach to K six. Nobody else. Nobody um, else had any Zavala, character. I, I, yeah, there's I, nobody else is going to get that. Eris Morn, I think, was at, at least had some character, but nobody actually likes her, right? Because she's not like a likable person. Yeah, right? it's her character though. But at least she was a character. Uh, Zavala is basically a blank slate. Uh, mm -hmm. I guess uh, who's the Crucible guy? Wilson. Shax. He's pretty fun, but you know yeah, he's not. He's a, I love Shax. I would be yeah. upset if something happened to Shax. Lord but Shax like Zavala got all Shax. dad mode on me in Warmind. Like, what are you doing here, Guardian motherfucker? Like when the Cabal were rushing down the city, you were like, oh, you don't need my help or guidance anymore. Like I'm an equal. Zavala's like, sudden, don't you think you played enough video games? Shouldn't you be outside mowing the lawn? <laughs> like, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. Now all of a sudden I'm at the fucking kids table during Thanksgiving at the tower, and it's not fucking uh -huh. cool, man. Like I put in work. <laughs> to be at the big boy table and be able to explore <laughs> Hella Space and at, at my own will. But like back to the whole like um Cade thing, like dude, even the next day, like I got a rain day at work and uh it wasn't raining where where I live, so I was out mowing the lawn and like the whole time I was mowing the lawn, like that trailer was on my mind and I've never been this motivated in my entire life. In Were Destiny. you crying when you were mowing the lawn? In, in Destiny. <laughs> <laughs> it was hot. It was hot. It might have been sweat. It was a sweat, man. Uh, right. 
I need a headband. My Where's my sweet Dick Willie headband? <laughs> <laughs> need that branded merchandise. <laughs> it, got, you know, it, got, it got my eye. You know, Beastly. Sweat, you know what I mean? We and need I'm, sweet Dick Willie merch. <laughs> might have been confused with tears. <laughs> but uh, it, for the first time in Destiny, like I'm super motivated to go after Aldrin or a character, and like there's not yeah. a reason why yeah, I want to take them too. out. Yeah, I mean it, it's yeah. effective for sure. But well, well, well I mean, I want him what I'm worried about sister. isn't so much uh, the Forsaken because we're gonna be hyper motivated to fuck shit up in the Forsaken DLC. What I'm worried about is after the Forsaken DLC when we have no characters that we give a shit about in Destiny. Hold on, guys, hold on. <laughs> Are you guys 100 percent sure? Or do you guys even believe that uh, Bungie would do something like this? Or is it possible they're doing the whole Avengers Infinity War of killing off favorites? I don't think they will kill off Kate Six, man. Oh, I just yeah, I do. I do think they're killing him off, 100%. Um, what? Yeah, from what Briar sense. said, from what Briar said, and from a Guardian standpoint, his ghost is dead. From an Exo st- standpoint, you can't just reboot them because they died. They reboot their mind because they reboot the Exos because the human mind tries to reject the Exo body. And there's this thing called degenerative rampancy or something like that. And like you literally get rebooted so that you start the process of being an exo over again mentally. So <laughs> and Cade like Six has done reset. things. Cade Six has done things to remember stuff from the past. Like he remembers his son Ace. He, there's parts about he may be the only person who remembers the collapse of the Golden Age when it happened. Like he was alive during that. And like there's uh, in no, the we're never gonna King, explore that. Yeah, the Taken King, he would hide cards like spades for weapons, diamonds for, you know, treasures, and then hearts signified like a woman that he was in love with that worked it. Because um, a woman's ass is shaped like a heart when you turn it upside down. And like he uh, <laughs> fell in love with some chick at Clovis Bray. I can't remember her name. Uh, Maya Sandoresh, I think, was her name that he fell in love with. Um, but you can't just reboot him because he's an exo. Now there's a lot of theories out there that at the end of the trailer, there's a hunter carrying him. And a lot of people seem to think that that's the, there is, uh, yeah. the exo stranger. But at the same time, they've been every like tidbit of video that they show like your guardian, for some reason it says a hunter. So I don't know if that's just like continuing the theme of them showing the same character representing your character. Like, I don't know, but I think he's dead. Oh, that'd be crazy. And, yeah, it sucks. But. Who's going to take over? Zavala? <clears throat> I don't think Ikora. Zavala's got it in him, Ikora dude. Ikora's 100% dad cool mode. Like, Ikora's cool, but, like, they're going to have to definitely introduce... Ikora's, like, cool like your, like, college professor is cool. Like, yeah, she's yeah. 100% like, you're cool. You're cool out. for a college professor, but I don't really want to hang out with you after the class. <laughs> I would like to see, like, Amanda Holiday expanded upon. Naked? Maybe? Oh, no, I'm sorry, my man. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Amanda Holiday would be cool to like kind of step up. I mean, not necessarily to take the Hunter Vanguard, but that's another thing too. Who's gonna be our Who's gonna be our Hunter Vanguard? Mm. Are we just gonna go in all the way through the rest of Destiny Two without a what Hunter if, Vanguard? What if our Hunter became the Hunter Vanguard? So what? Like we just pass out engrams to everyone all day? Like I'm not doing that. I'm toxic. Mm. I'm keeping that shit. Yeah, no, that yeah. doesn't work. At least you're honest. <laughs> that doesn't work for me. <laughs> I'm like, oh, this package had masterwork in it? Nah. Negative. So like, oh, you man. got another blue. Sorry. Bro, you get this one. You're basically Rahul. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, let's talk All about right. some other uh, E3 yeah. shit. All right, so let's get started with Xbox. We don't need to go through everything, but Xbox came out this year swinging absolutely, to me, what they needed to do. Uh, Xbox, in my opinion, had been lagging behind the competition because they lacked exclusives. Phil Spencer came out, hit the floor, and talked about 50 games, many of them being Xbox exclusives for the console and for PC, which I still think is a bad idea. Uh, they also... Why do you think that's a bad idea, Beastly? It gives you less of a reason to buy an Xbox console. I mean, yeah, I'm but talking you're about, still playing the game. Say what? You're still playing the game. You're still in the Microsoft universe. It's different. If... if if, uh, let's say, um, The Last of Us came to PC, how many people wouldn't have bought a PlayStation 4? It's, me- not, it's not the same, because Microsoft it's- owns Windows and the Xbox. PlayStation, Sony doesn't own Windows. It's not the same. It's not, it's not a valid comparison. Yeah, well, I mean, to me, it's serving two masters, if that's the case. If you own Microsoft, both- Microsoft's got the Xbox store, 
Microsoft's got the Xbox Store on PC. They got, you know, they own Windows. Uh, they own the Xbox. So it's like, it doesn't matter where you play a game, they're still making out. And they can offer the added value for Xbox players that if you buy Gears of War 4, then you can play it on your Xbox or you can play it on your PC, depending on I, if you want to sit in the I, living room I, or I, at, I, I, at your I have desk. It. I, I play it on PC. I have it on PC and my Xbox. I understand that. And that that's co- kind of like an egalitarian way of looking at it. But for me, as a console lover, and for people who love consoles first, I think it's a bad idea. You you can't serve two masters. I, and I don't understand me, why. What who the loser is here though? You can if you're competing against yourself. They're not competing losing, against yourself. They they absolutely are. No, they're not. If you have an Xbox console and you're serving How? a console market, but, but which one, which one do you is, want to grow? Which one do you want to grow? They want both to grow. People, no, but they're offering more have, value to both people. But it's different because if you buy it's not different. Little, it's more value to finish. both people. Let me let me finish. If you buy a sixty dollars game on your PC, that's fine. You already own a PC. You didn't buy your computer from Microsoft. They have Windows. Fine. But if that game wasn't on PC, you'd have to buy a console, which is mo- multiple hundreds of dollars, and then the game. They're competing against themselves, and they're losing out by selling a sixty dollars game on a PC versus selling a console with those games. It's just math. I think you're looking at it short sighted. I think what they're actually doing is they're building an ecosystem of gamers let in us know the living the room. Shit. Oh, hey, I let you finish. You gotta let me finish. They're building an ecosystem of gamers in the living room and in the office. So it doesn't matter if you if you like gaming on a PC or on a couch or it, you know wherever you are, you're still a Microsoft gamer, right? You're still in the Microsoft ecosystem. You're buying stuff from the Microsoft Store. It doesn't matter if you own an Xbox or a PC, you're in their ecosystem. They're not serving two masters, they're serving one master and that's Microsoft's wallet. That's not true. Uh, the reason I think that they're they're ser- serving two masters is because the Xbox is in direct competition. With no, it's not. It's it's Let, oh, with in PlayStation. Direct, I don't know if, with PlayStation. I don't know if it's like I I, PlayStation I, and I, I think you're both right, but I think that they're looking at gaming trends right now, and most people are probably playing their games on a PC more than console. And I do think that we're within the next couple of years we are going to see a massive push towards PC gaming more than there already is now. And that's what I feel about this, this whole discussion. I feel like both of you guys are right, but I feel like they may be start leaning in towards PC gaming, like being their main frontier, like cool. You own an Xbox, you have the option to play it. They're allowing a lot of cross plays on games, like, you know, with sea of thieves and stuff like that with, but like prior said, like to play, any Microsoft exclusive game, you either have to have a PC or an Xbox. Either way, you're buying into their ecosystem. And I guarantee you they're making more money off Windows and PC gaming than they are off just the Xbox market. Right, And they're getting you to go to the Xbox or the Microsoft store, which has more than just games in it. Right. So they got, yeah. you know, they got... Uh, fucking Microsoft office in there I'm, and like I'm, you know like all that other shit I'm telling you they're making a push like I, they're going to this is this is going to be their move towards the PC digital era I, like, I might be wrong I might be out of touch and I'm totally fine with that I feel like moving towards that uh PC kind of in- infrastructure is probably a it's too soon for me in my opinion. Do I you think guys yeah. think? Let me. Uh, this is a little beside the point, but do you guys think that? I mean, I think we're all convinced for sure. Like it's it's pretty easy to figure out that there's new consoles on the horizon, right? In the next yeah. two years or so, like the Xbox and PlayStation are coming out with new her- new consoles. Yeah. Do you guys think there's going to be another generation of consoles after that? Yeah. I've me me and uh, my cousin Conman were talking about this and. I tend to lean towards the side of, I don't know if there will be more consoles. I think it might lean more towards streaming services to where they run all the hardware on their end and you stream it to a small device in your living room, you know what I mean? Or your office or wherever you're playing. Um, Because in order for them to keep up with these technological demands that we have for processing, for graphics for other media on our consoles and stuff like that. Like the whole point of a console is for it to be affordable. And if you're paying two grand for a console, why would you limit yourself 
spending two grand to one platform when you could just get a PC, you know what I mean? And a much better one for that matter. Mm -hmm. So like, I do think that like we are plateauing in a sense of how much a, a console costs versus how much power it's going to provide. Because if we're wanting a lot of this power that we want in our home consoles, we're going to have to pay for it. This isn't just going to manifest out of, you know, unicorns and rainbows. Like it, money makes that shit work. You know what I mean? So like if you <laughs> sure. want it, if you want your consoles to be affordable, <clears throat> I don't think we can really complain about the power that they have currently. But like I do think it is leaning towards we're going to be streaming a lot of our games off some massive servers and hardware somewhere else. When the and there's there's good and bad things to that. Well, when the PlayStation and the Xbox first came out, BC will remember this. I was disappointed in the power that they exhibited right when they sh showed up for the very first time back in 2013. I was like, you know, 4K TVs are a thing. Like, why aren't these things supporting 4K? We had to wait for the Pro and the X version for them to support 4K or the S version, I guess, in the Xbox. You know, I was like, you know, like, why are we waiting on these things? It's because of costs. Like, like Wilson said, it's like they can't, you know, they can't just throw unlimited funds at building these machines because people end up having to pay for them and the, you know sony's learned the hard way you can't sell a 600 dollars console it's just not a thing you know well, <laughs> the next box couldn't even sell a 500 dollars one so it's really like it seems like 400 dollars is the top i i think at some point in time we will see a, a completely online infrastructure for streaming games i think that the netflix of video games is going to happen at some point i don't think it'll be the generation after the coming generation uh, the reason is I don't see that it, it trending in that direction for anyone besides Microsoft. The juggernaut right now in the gaming world is Sony, uh, and it doesn't appear that they're really focusing on the in internet e ecosystem or the, inter the, the computerized or streaming service. It seems that they're focusing on their focusing on their consoles. Uh, they're focusing on keeping hardware at a reasonable price for consumers, and it appears that Nintendo's doing the same thing. And if we've learned anything, you know, Nintendo's not getting out of the console game anytime soon. Right. So, uh, and if we look at right now, we're five years into this game generation. They're already they've already iterated and made new hardware, and they've already said Phil Spencer said the next Xboxes. So they're already working on more than one SKU for the new Xbox. Well, of course, there's going to be five models of the next one. And and, and of course, they're working on multiple ones. It's going to be the so, Xbox Two X and the Xbox Two Slim yeah, and the so, Xbox so, Two slightly slimmer. Yeah. Like Ooh, the, I want that slightly reason, slimmer. <laughs> the reason they're doing it is because they're looking at what, what is going on now and the trends that are happening now is that people are buying these consoles in droves. People, I mean, the PlayStation 4 is on track to be as, as popular as the PlayStation 2. I think, uh, I think the consoles right to, now... What's that? I'm sorry, Brian. I, I think the consoles right now are benefiting greatly by a couple of things. Video, video graphics, card or graphics cards basically being like crazy mm -hmm. expensive because of unforeseen issues with, you know, m cryptocurrency mining and RAM prices being incredibly expensive because of basically, well, that, that's a different story, but I think right now, like if you were to compare, actually, if, if you were to compare like an Xbox one X or a PS4 pro to a computer that you could build for $500 in early 2017 they'd get blown away right now it's a different story because graphics cards prices went crazy and ram prices went crazy but how does you know how does microsoft and sony keep up with that they got to put together a box that can compete with you know what people are seeing in e3 demos on pc like cyberpunk there's no way that game's coming out looking like that on an xbox one or a ps4 i'm sorry it's not happening that there's People came out of that demo saying, "Holy shit, this is like, you know, the most incredible thing I've ever seen." And they were they re they released the specs that that game was shown on, and it, it was a you know it was a top of the line computer, it was a three thousand dollar computer. It was a and quantum they, computer. It was a quantum computer. <laughs> it was running on an alien spaceship. It's like yeah. so like, but at the same time, you got like something like an Nvidia Shield, right? For two hundred dollars, you could buy this Nvidia Shield. And you can play any new game at 1080p, high quality settings, but you stream it off the internet. And like that technology, I think, is going to get better. You won't have to upgrade your NVIDIA Shield every two to six years to make sure you can keep playing the most current games. And if you do have to upgrade it, it's a $200 purchase instead of a $400 purchase. So if all this stuff is getting run off site, your library is off site. 
that's very appealing. It, that's very it, it, appealing. It is, right? But the one thing that we're not taking into account here is that there are people out there who are just plain and simple console gamers. There are people who played on the PlayStation who have memories of, you know, playing Castlevania. There were people and Let me finish, five bro. years ago who, there, who were plain and simple. You know, I own DVDs. I don't want to go to the, rent the store. Yeah, well, I don't want to well, use Netflix. A person, a person like they me, change, people change their fucking like mind, me. man. <laughs> They're not taking away console gaming. They're taking away the platform at which you play them on. The only difference is instead of having an actual console with a disc tray and all this stuff in it, you're just having something with a controller in your hand streaming That's it from somewhere happen. else. You I don't know, know man. I mean? Beastly, remember the conversation were... we were having like four or five years ago and we were talking about how like, you know, disc disc based game will never go away because people want to have it in their collection. Yeah. And meanwhile, GameStop's looking for a buyer because nobody's buying disc based games anymore. Everybody, you know, on PS4 and Xbox and and Switch, everybody's buying them digitally because it's so much more convenience. You know, GameStop's trying to sell Funko Pops instead of video games because nobody's coming in the store to buy video games anymore. I've been buying all my physical games off but like eBay or Amazon, Amazon and stuff, you know what I mean? Like, I don't think it's necessarily the need for um, physical games is going away. I just think that the means at which people are purchasing them, like, I could go to GameStop. Sure, I could do it I could, at home for free and not have to waste your gas. Yeah, and or I, I could go to GameStop, like do what Beasley said, or I could go to GameStop and have to listen to the guy try to sell me on one of their damn cards <laughs> for the next 20 minutes the whole time I'm standing in line. It comes you know with a I mean? free issue of Game Informer, though. Yeah, yeah. Do you, have you heard of Game Informer? <laughs> I Some chick at GameStop gave me a lifetime membership. Uh, I thought. I swear to God, I thought blowjob was coming out of those lips. <laughs> I'm like, God damn! I don't. I have like three issues of Game Informer coming every month. <laughs> and this is what's going on at fucking E3, guys. All right. I do. I do like having a physical copy of the game. Uh, I don't give I mean, a shit. I really don't. You don't. No, I, I find it digital copies are much more convenient, especially if I own multiple versions of the same console, because if I got a PlayStation up here in my office or a PlayStation downstairs in my living room and I go to play a little Destiny in the living room, I'm like, ah, oh, fuck, the disc is upstairs. So I got to run upstairs, go get the disc. That's bring it the reason down. I'm digital, because we game share as well. Yeah, and it's and a pain it in the dick. It makes much more convenient. Yeah. Uh, but you guys have known for years I've been a video game collector. I love collecting stuff. On my Xbox, I have physical uh, versions of games. On my Switch, I have physical versions of games because I don't game share. I do like to phys- I like to hold something in my hand that I paid for. I don't like there to be an outage or an internet issue that stops me from accessing something I rightfully paid for. And that's something that Sony fans at least know about from 2011 when we couldn't play the games we paid for for three months through PSN. And to me, that's not right. If I pay for something, I want to be able to access it at any time. And one major issue is the the prospect or possibility that one day these servers might go down. Sony might completely go bankrupt. Anything could happen. And we could lose access to all the games we paid for through digital download. And that would be a huge catastrophe for everybody who bought digital. And I can't wait to see Briar's YouTube video in 15 years on that. But let us continue. Someone will find out a way to crack it. Anyway. What did you guys think about Microsoft opening up these new studios? You guys think that was a good idea? The initiative playground games, Ninja Theory, that blew my mind. Because Ninja Theory, of course, uh, made uh, Hellblade. They made uh, uh, Heavenly Sword. You know, some of these great games now owned by by Microsoft, Undead Labs, of course, you guys know, and Compulsion Games. You guys think these are good gets? Do you think that they yeah, were kind of huge, man? Yeah. It's it's huge. One of them is opening up in Santa Monica too. So it's like gonna yeah. be a direct competition. The They're gonna the be in direct competition for uh for you know, basically people who make games for programmers, for developers with Sony Santa Monica, right? Yep. Yep. Like that that's kind of a move right there. But yeah, I mean that's the thing Microsoft needs. They need ex- they need exclusives. Like I think that Microsoft makes the better console right now, p- kind of by a long shot. Sure. But like, there's not r- really any compelling reasons to buy it because if you're already a Sony owner, then you can play all, all of the most of the big games on either console, and you also get God of War. You get you, know, you get a bunch of Sony exclusives that are really exciting. Whereas you know. So Microsoft's got Gears of War 4. They showed Gears of War 5. Halo. We got some long in the tooth exclusives. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I want to ask you guys. What did you think? Did you guys, were you excited when you saw Crackdown 3? I saw that. It wasn't my no. kind of game. 
No, I love no. Crackdown 1. They lost yeah. me with Crackdown 2. Yep. Crackdown 3 has been delayed so many times I have no faith in it. Exactly. Uh, this ought to get you excited, Briar. Cuphead, the delicious last course. I don't want to go through every one of these games uh, one by one because Internet. I don't care about like 90% of them. Cuphead, yeah, great. More DLC. I, I, I doubt I'll play it. I had enough of Cuphead. Yeah, well, we're, we're having a discussion on E3, so I wanted to hit on a couple of these topics. Yeah. Um, I want to talk mentioned- about the next game on this list, though, because Cyberpunk 2077, the demo was okay. Like, I'm sorry, not the demo, but the actual the trailer they showed at the conference was okay. Like, it, it showed graphically a cool world. But what really got me excited for this game, other than the fact that Witcher 3 is the best game of all time, and this is made by the same people, is the fact that people who actually went and saw the demo, there, there was a closed-door demo for this game, came out of there hyped about it. And these are like I jaded press people, right? Like I'm talking about Austin Walker from Polygon, or not Polygon, from... Uh, wherever the fuck he's from. I'm talking about guys from giant bomb. I'm talking about like, these are people who like, you know, look at this stuff all the day. Yeah. Critics, man. So this game is running and they got to play it. They did not get to play it. They got to watch a gameplay demo of somebody playing it, but it was gameplay, right? It's going to be a first person game in the cyberpunk 2077 world. They said it's an incredibly dense world. It's a, it takes place in an open world where, you know, like imagine like kind of like a Grand Theft Auto type of world with you can jump in cars, you can like you can walk around freely, but with like a level of attention that you could that you would expect out of The Witcher Three, and a level of graphic fidelity that was just outstanding. I, I saw Paris from is it Gamertag Radio the podcast he's on? I think so. I think it's Gamertag Radio. He there's a picture of him coming out of the the. Uh, the demo just like beaming like yeah. unbelievably happy like this whatever this demo was, it was really impressed people and you know coming from the guys who made Witcher 3 again the best game ever made this this is really exciting stuff Behind Dude, the last it, it looks because like the whole time I was watching the uh, trailer or whatever I feel like the trailer did a good job of like setting your expectations of like what kind of world you're going to be in yeah, you know I mean, it wasn't so fo- it wasn't focused on gameplay at all, but like it yeah. definitely was like the whole time in the back of my mind, I'm thinking Witcher three in this cyberpunk futuristic world. You know, what I mean, I'm going to be going around doing all these quests, hearing all these mini stories and <clears throat> your main character doesn't exactly look like a good guy. He looks like a guy that might kind of like waffle in between. I'm sure you're going to get to a lot of decide a lot of, you know, uh, your interactions and what kind of person you're going to be. Cause that's a classic move for them to do. Um, but it, it got me really pumped, man, because there is like when the cyberpunk 2077 logo came on, there was like this, uh, just almost kind of like an eighties vibe to it. Oh yeah. It's super, yeah. Yeah. It's super cool. Yeah, and it just, I don't know, man. Like like you said, Witcher 3, one of the greatest, the greatest game of all time. Like, this is this is going to be something special, man. Like, I'm, yeah. I cannot wait. Like, it, it really, it, it feels like, from what I've been hearing, like, the buzz around this is that, like, it, it takes things that you are established gameplay-wise, but it does it so much better, and it adds so much detail to everything and you and you have that that level of quality that came out of the witcher as far as like questing goes that demo that they played or they they watched me and played they were told it was a side quest it wasn't even like a main story quest and people were like blown away by it right and you said that they said there's no way this is being played on on current hardware that so there's some debate about this uh cd project red has said that you know, the game is coming out for current consoles or it's being planned for the current generation. Um, a lot of people who, who came out of the demo said, like, there's no way. Like, it's just not not happening, right? Um, but, you know, it could be that we saw, you know, the best version of it or that they saw the best version of it running on. It was running on a $3,000 computer. They, they're really like It was an i7 8700K with a GTX 1080 Ti. It was a very expensive, very high-end computer. Uh, it was running at 30 frames per second. It did dip, drop some frames, they said, too. So mm. it wasn't even running oh, perfectly. Wow. 
So it could be that, you know, this is still in development. It hasn't been optimized yet. We don't even know if it's coming out in 2019 or 2020. Like, it's not. We don't even know when it's coming out. It could be that it's coming out. It'll look, you know, it'll co- it'll play at 720p, 30 frames per second on the current generation's consoles, you know, and play at 4K. You know, who knows what's going to happen as far as that goes. But just the amount of characters on the screen, the city was filled with people. And they were not people just walking Assassin's Creed style in straight lines across the screen. <laughs> there were people doing things, you know, like there's some They're people going that, about their day. Okay. Yeah. Do, wow. Going about their day, like having conversations, you know, like stopping, talking to other people, you know, sitting there flipping bottle caps into a cup on the, on the curb, you know, like just very rich, very real feeling world. Um, you know, I, I was just hoping for another Witcher. I was hoping for a Witcher in 2077, right? <laughs> this is something different. This is a hugely ambitious project from CD Projekt Red. Yeah. What do you um, think of the reason? That, I mean, do you guys give any credence to it? Uh, maybe Xbox being their lead console? The reason that they revealed this at the Xbox? Uh, uh, I think conference? they have a deal with Microsoft. The same as they had with Witcher 3 was unveiled for the first time at the Microsoft con- yeah. conference. Wow. Yep. Okay, I mean, yeah, it looks it looks really interesting to me. Of course, we know CD Projekt Red, and they they've earned their respect from gamers. I can't wait to see it. I'm I'm thinking maybe 2020, the way that game looked. Uh, I couldn't yeah. imagine it next year. The fact I mean, the that fact- they 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 had a private demo that you couldn't play, you could only view, and the fact that they only had a trailer with no gameplay leads me to believe that it's at least going to be 2020. Yeah, I'm hoping fall 2019 or spring 2020, mm. but I feel like I want that game now, dude. I want oh my this God. game for the summer between Forsaken. Well, that's how I feel about E3 is, yeah, that stuff looks great, but fuck, when is it coming out? Every that's, fucking big name yeah. on this list, yeah. everything I got excited about at E3, maybe 2019, probably 2020, and that's so, a bummer. Can I well, tell, can I tell you guys about a game that I'm excited to play with you that we won't get to no, play? No, Beastly, what do you got? <laughs> <laughs> is, is it, does it start with an F? It starts with an F, Beastly. <laughs> I does cannot it have two wait. numbers in it? There's two numbers in it. Uh, uh, two good numbers, mind you, because our friend Hove76 has those numbers as well. But Oh Fallout my god, can 7- I kill Hove76 and Fallout 76? I <laughs> hope so. I hope he plays. I'd love to troll the shit out of Hove in that game if he this plays. This is a game I was going to talk about too, Wilson. This is, uh, then, then, it, le- then take it away, Beastly. Take it away, my uh, man. Was I the only one completely blown away? First of all, when they showed Fallout 76 and the graphical fidelity, it, it really was a shock to me compared to what we got in Fallout 4. In such a short period of time, the world completely changed. Open world looked like a completely different engine. And then when uh, I think it is the stage, yeah. and they mentioned that this is an open world co-op experience that you can play with your friends. I jumped up in my living room and ran <laughs> around, and I was screaming at Kate. I said, "We're finally get to experience Fallout together and go out there in this wasteland with our friends." This is to me one of the biggest and most exciting announcements that came. From the E3 press co- the the Agreed. Microsoft uh, uh, press conference. What's was, that uh, guy's name that was on uh, the? Was it Todd Howard? Is that Todd his Howard, name? Yeah, yeah. yeah, he's awesome. Yeah, he is. He I gotta is. say, like, I I didn't know what because we heard the Jason Schreier rumors, right? That Fallout 76 wasn't going to be like a main Fallout game. It was going to be you know some kind of open world survival game, right? And a lot of people were upset, but I was like, ah, that sounds actually kind of interesting to me because. Like, I used to love Fallout 3, but in a post-Destiny world where I really enjoy doing shit with my friends, like, fa- a multiplayer Fallout is interesting. Unbelievable. Right? Um, the possibilities Real interesting. Are That's like, what I'm I, saying. We get to build bases. We get to freaking... Dude, I want to roleplay it. I just want to hop on a server, roleplay it like it's like we're actual survivors of the wasteland. But like, Can I bring my Sea of Thieves character into Fallout 76? You can do whatever you'd like, bro. It's roleplay. You can do whatever you want to do. You can be a post-apocalyptic pirate if you want to be. So like, Beastly, you mentioned the graphical fidelity. I'm so glad that they chose um, Virginia to for the location because dc was cool vegas was cool all this stuff but like the city and like the dirt and the dinge it just it just became so bland and like you're seeing the same place over and over again and and 
from what we saw, I mean, I'm sure there'll be some it's of that, but it looks beautiful. Like there's green, there's yeah, lush, there's alive. mountains, there's beautiful. John fucking Denver, dude. Like when they were playing the music, <laughs> like it's, it was Come so good. Yeah, when, when they showed the terrain <laughs> and, and the way that it looked, Virginia, and you could see the trees swaying and the grass moving. It's it West Virginia, FYI. Okay. Uh, I'm only correcting but, you now because the comments true. are going to do it later. <laughs> That's true. Uh, when, when they showed the way that the, the world seems to be alive, that to me was a huge contrast to what we've seen in the past in Fallout games. And to, to have us together fucking around in this world, yes. going out there drinking Nuka Colas, fucking around in the Nuka- Fallout world, man. That's going to be fun. Like, we get yes. to build bases, find nukes. Find nukes. Oh, we man. can go around and find other codes with players and nuke the shit out of whoever we want to. Or maybe Briar will go full pirate on us and nuke us. We'll I might out. do it. You don't know. <laughs> I might. <laughs> maybe I'm, I'm going to we... play it straight. Maybe I'm not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dude, we can almost see like a YouTube series out of this damn thing. Like, oh, you know what God. I mean? Just like the adventures in the Fallout Wasteland with your friends. And like, dude, me and me and my boys that I've played games with for forever, we have always talked about a Bethesda game that we can play with our friends with up to like four First people. First time ever, guys. That First isn't time. that isn't um, a fucking MMO like Elder Scrolls right. Online. And I'm, I'm not hating on Elder Scrolls Online. It's just it's too much multiplayer for me. I just wanted a few intimate interactions with my friends where we can go in make progress together i can find an item drop it on the floor for one of you guys to pick up because it goes best with your build or whatever you're trying to do and dude there's all the exploring like you know how many times we're going to go out to find the world is supposed to be huge too that's what i'm saying four times bigger we're going to get so distracted from our primary objective of finding nukes that we're just going to get into so many fucking shenanigans in this game yeah i can't i mean i can see us now going into a vault and doing what they do stereotypically in film and Briar says guys we do this faster if we all separate and then we all separate (laughs) And go our own fucking way and get killed. <laughs> I'm really excited about this, guys. I like, really it, there's there's a couple of things that I really want to know before I'm like, I get super excited though. Like, I want to know how many people spawn can, into a world. Like, I really want to know that. He said a few dozen. He said a few dozen. Yeah. He, he also said, said okay. you won't select a server that like it'll just put you. So I'm curious as to how this is gonna work with your bases because if you put a base down, yeah, and you don't join that server. Is it going to take you a while to find one because of no, based it'll, upon- what he said, what they said, they might have said this in an interview afterward is that yeah. if you, if you quit your game and start again, then your, your base will move to the same spot on the new server. And if that spot is already filled, it'll move to a different spot. That's oh, wow. your base will move to a different spot or you'll just go yeah. to a different server. Um, they said a different spot, I believe. Ooh, continuity rip. <laughs> I don't know. Like, there's things I want to know still about this game, but I gotta say, like, just the the aspect of fucking around in the Fallout world with my friends, like, that just sounds fun right away. So I'm I'm definitely looking forward to that. All right, so a game I want to quickly mention because I doubt I don't know if you guys are even into this, but a game that really got me hyped, super excited, it looks beautiful, can't wait to play it. Kingdom Hearts three. Yeah, I don't give Keep- a shit. I figured. Uh, Wilson, have you ever played a Kingdom Hearts game? And, and, and if I played so, the I played the original. I'm gonna pee while you guys are talking about this. Absolutely right loved it. <laughs> <laughs> Bryce, like, I'm gonna piss while you guys are talking about this. I played the original. Absolutely loved it. And I just, I don't know, man. I haven't, haven't played gone another back. one. I haven't played another one since. And like, I just had this fear of just like it's not gonna live up to the original. Oh, it does. Kingdom Hearts two. <laughs> uh, man, um, it, it probably wouldn't stand. You know. The test of time now compared to what we see. You Wasn't know, there magically. two point? Isn't there a redone too? Yeah, yeah. Uh, they're all been remastered and stuff. So yeah, you can actually get it. But King Hearts 2 is just totally mind fucking am- just amazing. Um, this is going to be beautiful. And you can see what they're doing with the worlds. They take extreme uh, care with the details of each each of these Disney worlds. Like Notice you saw, that. Yeah, you saw the Pirates of the Caribbean. And whenever right. you go into these worlds, Sora takes on the aesthetic of whichever world he's in. Okay. So that's Sora in like a realistic world. And of course in King Hearts 2, you, you saw him go into the Lion King and he was a lion. I mean, I, I want to see the stuff they're not showing us because we know that Disney owns virtually everything now. Is you, is that what it is about Kingdom Hearts games for you is that you get to immerse yourself in like in all these worlds, all these different you, worlds. And you can, you have to, you have to go through them 
uh, to, to, to reach your objective. And while you're in these worlds, you usually end up helping a pivotal character from these worlds, you know, someone from the Disney, the Disney film. So previously, of course, it was all the cartoons. You meet the little mermaid, you talk to her, you go to Aladdin, you help uh, Ariel. But, but yeah. And so now I'm, I'm, the stuff they haven't seen, I think, is going to be the most exciting shit, uh, like the Avengers films, Star Wars, stuff yes, like that. I saw they were crossing going, that stuff over. That stuff is going to be in this game. They just haven't shown it yet. They're going to like if you look at Wreck-It Ralph 2, they got the Avengers in that. Um, and so I, I can't imagine them not having the Avengers in this and not having Star Wars in it and not having all these other great Disney properties. And the stories are always done so well. They're, it's really on par with most of your, you know, uh, full fledged AAA Final Fantasy experiences. So I'm really excited about it. I'm sure people in the comments are excited about it. If you guys don't know or if you do know, let Brian know what he's missing because King of Hearts is the shiznit, man. It's, it's truly, truly gangsta. Uh, so, what else did you guys see at the uh, Xbox? Welcome back, Brad. What did you guys think about the uh, Halo Infinite teaser? I mean, talk about a game that we're not going to see for a long time. Yeah. Um, dude, anything Halo, I'm all about, dude. I love the lore of Halo. Like, I even played Halo 5. Like, I really enjoyed it for a while. Um, I did enjoy there, it. There was some mention that Halo 5 in Master Chief Collection might be coming to PC, right? There's some hinting about that? Really? Yeah. <laughs> Ashcliff, he, Ashcliff said Briar just made us sit through the fallout shit, but now he leaves. That's how Briar rolls, man. I had to pee, hear, man. He didn't want to hear I drank like three beers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, it looks really cool, man. Like, any, like I said, anything Halo. I just wish we could have got to see more. Like, I, maybe if they would have that held game off is until next cl- year. Clearly, it early in development, right? Like, oh, yeah. but oh my god, the engine they're using, the graphical That's- fidelity of that trailer. Like, I don't know. If that's what we can expect, like graphically from the next Halo, then that's not coming out on an Xbox One, right? That's the next. That's at least the X. At least the X. I, I, I... You know, if they're building it for that engine, Briar, I mean. Well, to keep in mind, we saw a trailer. Okay? Yeah, imagine like... a launch game, though. Imagine a launch Halo game for mm. Microsoft's next console. Ah, oh, oh, man. Because I imagine right? we'll see a little bit more about it next year, but we probably won't even get a re- maybe not even maybe we'll get a release date next year. Yeah, maybe. my guess is they're targeting the launch of the next Xbox. But I mean, the fidelity with that trailer look like and it. with the with the uh, like there was a part where there's like a warthog like jetting like down like a path. Oh, it looks, it looks so good, man! It looks it incredible. Looks almost real, bro. Yeah, it, it looked it looks real looks- nice and like just the name Infinite just. So somehow it conjures up this is more than just Halo 6, right? Yep. This is something yep. a little bit more than that. And I'm I'm hoping that's what it is cuz I'm a little I'm a little tired of the Halo formula at this point. I'll be honest. I'm I a little bored it, with I, it. I bet it adopts RPG elements. I guarantee it. I would like I to see that maybe some open hint. world and yeah. Like I mean, <laughs> if you go back and play the first Halo, for its day, I mean, it had massive areas to explore, mm-hmm. you know, on your Warthog. Like, that first open world level, it's not open world, but that first level where you... Felt like it. It sure did. It sure Back did. Back in the day, it did. Yeah. Like, I'd be, I'd be very excited. Looking for them skulls and shit? That's it right. Took forever, dude. You're <laughs> like, how in the hell am I going to find these things? Like, you know, you had to look it up on the internet, and you're like, who the... Like, some of the areas that you could fly, and there were areas that you could fly out to, and maybe only had one little pack of enemies that you could encounter. And there's so... Some, it just seemed so uh, vast at the time, but... It really did. I, I really think what would sell the next Halo is launch console game and uh, open world maybe some RPG elements or not, but like how cool would it be to <clears throat> maybe do the campaign? I don't know. I guess we can do the campaign. Maybe just not even play as master chief. Maybe we're our own individual. Maybe the Spartan program got booted back up and that's they how you, show, they did show him. They showed him holding his, right. I get that, but I'm just saying, oh, even for... the masks look like more like a halo one mask than like the recent halo. Right. Like the original suit or whatever, but the it, uh, and all that, yeah. it, uh, It'd be cool if we just played as our own Spartan, and then we could have all these Spartans running around in an open world. Like I hate to get all like Destiny. Destiny. It sounds like you're you're you're. you're yeah, I, cool. I don't know if I really want them to do another Destiny. Like I already have a Destiny, and I've got more Destinies coming out. Right, I've got the new Avengers game, whatever that's going to be. Anthem. I got Division Two. It's like everybody wants to get in on this like Avengers live. Man. 
Yeah, everybody wants to get in on this like live service model, right? Mm -hmm. But there's something to be said for like I do want the cyberpunks of the world. I want the Last of Us of the world. I want those single player experiences to exist. You know, like I'm excited to play Fallout 76 with you knuckleheads, but I do want them to make Fallout 5. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah, 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 totally, totally, 100 percent understand that. Uh, did you guys get excited at all uh, for the Division 2? Not really. It looked like more of the same to you? I got yeah. more excited by what their business model is going to be about how a lot of the DLC is going to be free, like all of it. And like they already had like a content drop, like release schedule kind of. Isn't there and some confusion that there's going to be like a season pass or something though? I'm pretty sure they came out and said it was all just going to be free. Yeah, there's something on their website that there's some confusion around it, I think. Okay. Interesting. But either way, like, I'm going to buy it. I'm going to check it out. Absolutely. Like, anything that is an RPG esque experience, anything that I can play with friends, dude, like, I'm going to buy and check it out. Like, I even thought, like, and I'm sure we'll get into it, but like, you know, looking at like Anthem and stuff like that, I wasn't too excited. But like, Looking at any game on its own, I'm not too excited. It's just the prospect, like, of playing with friends. You know, what yeah, I mean? yeah. yeah, fucking yeah. around with friends. Yeah, exactly. I do. You know, so, like, I like fucking around with friends, but I also like interesting activities to do with <laughs> yeah, them. Right. With them, yeah. So, Sea of Thieves, I had a blast. I I played it, played it a ton when it first came out, and I had a blast doing it. But eventually, like, it just got repetitive and boring, right? It's like, because there just wasn't that much variety of shit to do. So there's got to be, there's got to be interesting gameplay loops. And I feel like that's what the division never really gave to me. Like, I, I really liked it when they came out with that survival thing, but I've never actually finished the story of the division. Like, I've never leveled up a character fully to oh, level really? 30. No, I've never gotten there because it just gets bored on, every time I do it. I did on console. Yeah. It, it was cool. I liked the story. Helicopter were, at the end. That was the last boss for a fucking helicopter. They were plot twists. Oh, thanks and for stuff. the spoiler. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it you had mentioned uh, Sea of Thieves, and there was that other game that they showed. There was that Skull and Bones. Yeah, I think it was. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I didn't actually get to see too much about it, but from what I've seen. Uh, journalists and other critics talking about is that this game kind of sounded like what we thought Sea of Thieves was going to be. Like, not just cruising around collecting treasure and bringing it back, like actual like quests, interactions, things cool. like that. Like, so I'm definitely going to be keeping a closer eye on uh, Skull and Bones. We yeah, haven't played Sea of Thieves since we played together. So You know what's That's fucked up is that in, in today's world, it's not enough for me to be excited about a video game. Is I want my friends to be excited about it too. Because if they're not, then I'm not going to have anybody to play it with. <laughs> you know, it's a <laughs> fucked up world that we live in all of a sudden. <laughs> Never thought about it that way. I want to just get one more game from the Xbox conference just to ask you guys your thoughts on what you, what you saw. Metro Exodus. Did you guys, what did you think of that first person show? Yeah, I've been looking forward to that since they first showed it off. Did they first show it off last year or the year before? They showed it off last year. Was it last year that was the first time they showed it? Yeah, I'm I'm 100% in. Uh, last Light in 2033. 2033? 2033 are both amazing games. I, um, played, I, I own those, but I haven't played them. They're, are they worth playing? Yeah, yes. they're definitely worth playing. 100%. Absolutely. Uh, they're very good. They're uh, very good. Graphically, they don't quite hold up anymore, but they're still okay looking. They're not like bad looking, but they have a Redux version available on Steam and consoles, I think, that looks a little better. It's been boosted up graphically. But they're very yeah, good. The story of them is very good. They, they play phenomenally. Like, they're yeah. good games. Uh, okay. And that that looks like it's really stepping it up a notch. It looks really right, cool. So th those were kind of the, the big big points for the Xbox conference. I think Xbox did really really well this year. They they brought out the big guns. They had tons of exclusive console and PC exclusives. The most exciting uh, thing, basically, I think, was just their their new initiative, initiative to like get some consoles back under their belt. Right? It's like that's something that they used to have in the 360 era. And then seemingly Don Matrix, kind of under his tenure, they kind of just let them all go. Mm -hmm. And the Xbox has really suffered from that, right? Is not it's, having it's a sad thing, bro. Because yeah. they have the, like you said, the most powerful console easily, the most powerful console capable of the most in the home. But they've they've let the development side go to the wayside. They yeah. let their exclusives kind of wander off off the off the plantation. You know, and they've had some exclusives that just basically have been 
indefinitely canceled. They've had delay after delay after delay to the point where people are like, I'm not even excited about this game anymore. Crackdown and 3 so, was supposed to be an Xbox One X launch game. Really? Mm-hmm. Well, we see what happened there. They got actors playing the main role. You know? uh, but to me, it just it's not for me. It's not one of those things for me. But it's really good to see what Phil Spencer's doing. Uh, he's turning you know, the Xbox brand around. I think that uh, 2019, 2020 are going to be really good years for Xbox. I think, if anything... Uh, PlayStation and Nintendo really need to keep their eye on them at this point. After Yo, I want to talk about Anthem a little. You guys want to talk about some Anthem? Sure. All right. Yeah, man. I got to say, I'm going to give you my first impression of the trailer, and then I'm going to talk a little bit. I want to I want to hear what you guys thought about it. But I saw that trailer, and I was like, I don't like the look of this game at all. It looked slow. It looked plotting. It looked boring. Like I, I watched that trailer. The, when they, the, What press conference was that on? Was it uh, EA? It, it was EA, yeah. Yeah. They did like a 20-minute like developer interview thing and they showed some gameplay, and the gameplay just looked slow, like real slow. Apparently, you know, like so they were showing the slowest of the are they called frames? What are they called? The anthem. I think so, yeah. Monster, whatever they're called. Yeah. Um they were they were showing the Goliath, which is the biggest and slowest one. But then I start hearing Similar to like with Cyberpunk, I start hearing kind of the hot takes of people who actually played it, and they let actually they let people got hands on with this game. So a lot of people in the Destiny community actually were able to play this game at E3, and what I heard was completely different than what I saw. What we right? saw? Oh. Apparently, the flying is super fun. Like the j- javelins, they're called javelins. Thank you, chat. Are really fun to pilot. The shooting is very fun. Like. It's it's incredible. Like the, by what I saw and what I experienced and what I'm being told are two different fucking things about this game. Which one do you believe? <laughs> I don't know yet. I mean, I'm, I already know I'm buying the game, so yeah, I'll get to of course, figure it out. Yeah, it. yeah, I'll figure it out firsthand. But it's it's very odd to me. Uh, do you think that games like this appeal to us? Because especially for you guys, are you chasing that next better Destiny type of experience? I am. I'll be honest. I am. When something else comes out that, that I guess it fills all those spots that Destiny does, but expands on them. There's nothing that's that. going to do that. I mean, nothing on the horizon is going to do that. Destiny has a lot of pieces that really appeal to me personally. But what Anthem was kind of been touted as is sort of like, you know, it's just PvE and it's going to go a little heavier into the PvE side of things. And from what we saw, it's got a real Monster Hunter vibe to it. Where, yeah, Monster Hunter. Yeah, that's what like I was going to say. And like the whole <clears throat> not having PvP thing. I don't know. It There's was a bit no of a, PvP? It was a bit of a turnoff for me. Not at launch, at least. Um, it was a bit of a turnoff for me. And But then at the same time, like if I'm not going to like, if I'm having questions about like, the core gameplay maybe i don't want pvp in it you know what i mean if i am not enjoying what i like i'm much with you briar from what i saw i was not impressed not a fan and then all of a sudden about a couple hours later there's all these people exploding about it because they actually got to play it and yeah stuff. so i hope that maybe we can get our hands on a demo at some i would like them to do a demo on that game it'd be really cool because i mean it's a big deal it's a new title you know what i mean like people want to see what it's about and stuff like that but it to answer your question beastly i don't want the next better destiny i just want destiny to be better you know what i mean like i don't <laughs> well said it's like there's because when you say a better destiny like there's so many core elements to destiny in my opinion that keeps me coming back to the game that it would almost be impossible for any other game to nail because the most core element is my friends list and no matter what game it is there might be a vast majority of my friends list, but not the entire friends list is playing, you know, a certain game like and it's I want it to be good. Like, I'm not trying to hate or anything like I'm going to buy it. I'm going to try it out. Like we were saying, hopefully there's a demo for it. And like, I do want it to be good and I do want to explore this world with my friends. But the moment that they started flying around and stuff like that, like I'm not you guys know, I fucking hate flying. You know what I mean? Like and it's not because I'm Even playing games. Video- it's not even necessarily game. in like <laughs> I hate it for different reasons in games. He must have played so, Superman sixty four. So so in real life, 
<laughs> it left fucking scars. <laughs> yeah, dude, everyone hated that fucking game. Um, so in real life, it's obviously the fear of crashing. Uh, in a video game, I just don't. It just doesn't appeal to me, man. Like fighting, like uh, jet fighter games, like dog fighting, stuff like that. Like any time in Star Wars Battlefront, I gotta, you know, went into a couple space battles with friends. You know what I mean? It just felt very old and repetitive to me, and I just it's, as soon as they flew around, as old as picking up a gun and shooting it. And like, yeah, that's true. You know what I mean? Like, I get that a lot of people find that repetitive, but like, that's not even. I just don't like it. Like, that's not the fantasy for it's me. Not I your thing. I don't yeah. have the fantasy to fly. You know what that's I mean? That's respectable. It's, you know, like, that's when you're on that. That's bus completely though. respectable. I'm on that bus, though. We flying. You got that shit. You know what I'm right? saying we, we flying, but like it. As soon as their feet were on the ground. I found myself sitting up in my seat and leaning in and paying a little bit more attention to it. And I actually enjoyed more of what the devs had to say than what I saw. Uh, well, well, for me, but, I didn't see the whole developer commentary, Wilson. But well, I right. did, what did they say that got you excited? It's kind of, it's not even necessarily that they got me excited. It's just that I found it more interesting than the presentation itself of the game. Okay. And it was right. because, but at the same time, it's all just words and potential empty promises. You know what I mean? Like, it's... It's like politics up there, man. They'll tell you tell <laughs> yeah. you what you want to hear. And like the whole mm-hmm. time I'm hearing, okay, it sounds like you're making a dig at Destiny here. Like you're like, oh, we've learned from other games of a similar nature ah. that this is the best way to do it. It's like, oh, I wonder yeah. what fucking game you're talking about. Why don't you just say right? it? Right. Like, they you know, it was an empty <laughs> dig too, because they didn't they didn't show off any kind of loot pro- progression. Like even in their earliest demo last year, or earliest their earliest showcase of the game they showed a you know a guy picking up like a a purple weapon and like showing the gun off right and they didn't show any of that in this demo they haven't talked about anything end game they haven't talked about any of that shit the division says hey we're gonna have eight player raids anthem doesn't say dick you know like so that that was concerning to me i'm sorry bc i cut you off i just wanted to hear him Talk no, about I, I wanted to hear him too. Uh, I didn't get to see any of that uh, developer commentary, but I did see the game when they revealed it and uh, when they actually showed it, uh, when they had the scripted people, the actors talking. For me, I, I t- took away pretty much the same thing you did, Briar. To me, it looked kind of like a lethargic experience. It did seem like a, a mech-based flying Monster Hunter style game where cheesy dialogue is being shot back and forth. And at that time, it didn't grab me. It didn't grab me the way that the initial reveal of the game did when they flew in and you flew over the animals and, you know, it didn't feel the same. And, and I'm happy to hear what you said, that people actually played it and, and have completely different takeaways than what we saw. Because when I did see the actual gameplay from E3, I was like, ah, oh, this looks slow. It's it's kind of, you know, slow over the shoulder, third person perspective. Uh, and, and it just looked like it to me. It looked like uh, uh, the division with mech suits, just kind of slow, bullet spongy. It had like Holy a division God. mech suit monster hunter vibe. Yeah, to me that's really kind of what what it, it felt like, and I'm happy to hear that people actually played it. Yeah. Really like. Uh, that's, well, that's, that's the thing, time. right? It's like the people who had hands on. They seem to really enjoy it. Like what I saw was slow and plotting. They said it felt good. Like it, you're you're, you're like sex, bro. They, I wouldn't know. They. <laughs> you know the the javelins felt agile and it was fun to fly them around and it was the weaponry was fun and that you had a lot of abilities at your disposal and they felt powerful which is what you know a pve only experience kind of allows that destiny kind of doesn't is that mm-hmm. you know your, your weaponry being able to bring that into the crucible limits it some somewhat um i don't know like i'm definitely i'm definitely yeah, going to beat. check it out but the trailer did not get me re- excited for it. The what people said about it later did. Okay, so moving on to, to PlayStation's E3 showing, they really showed off four, I'll say five games that were noteworthy. Um, yeah, are any the, of them coming out anytime soon? Uh, I don't think they did release dates. Kind of like Microsoft. Black Ops Four had a release date. Shocker. <laughs> and we bought it already too. <laughs> we bought Black Ops 4 already so we could get the Black Ops 3 maps from the other. I didn't Black buy Ops it. Watch. I know. I, I haven't bought it either. <laughs> but like I, one I've been trailer playing Modern Warfare 2 too, bro. It's, it's a lot of fun, man. Is one trailer that got me pumped and then got me super sad at the end because, like Briar said, there wasn't a release date was that tiny little teaser that they showed for Doom that's going to be a sequel oh. to Doom 2016. Like, dude, the soundtrack in that game, yes. the frame rate, the yes. movement, everything about that game screams like 
hot butter down a slide on a I'm rubbing my knee like everything is just smooth <laughs> and I, I cannot wait for the next iteration i'm not a big like heavy metal fan like i used to be when i was yeah. in high school but man there is something about that track it that fits. just it fits it hits yeah, the notes man. perfect you walk into a room and all of a sudden dan 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 you know, <laughs> it's on the guitar like, yeah yeah exactly <laughs> you're like you, you know it's about to go down <laughs> yeah you know it's about to go down so to me, yeah. that was that was one of the, my favorite showing too. We didn't get to see any gameplay, but you no, know, you see- it was just a teaser, right? It was like, okay, it's gonna be no, on Earth. Here. There's gonna be more. They're gonna apparently they're gonna uh, unleash more on us at QuakeCon, which is kind of cool. Um, but I mean, just knowing there's more Doom coming is enough because Doom 2016 was an amazing game. They actually, to me, Doom 2016 changed the world almost as much as Doom the original because, uh, it's, at least for consoles, you we get- never. Never seen anything that ran that smooth on a console. Yeah, before. dude, and it's and really it ran cool. on everything. You could play it on PC or console, and like I, I do that game think, runs on a potato PC too, and it, it, it runs so good on both. Like that's what's so good about it. It is optimized like a well-oiled machine. But like I was cracking up during this entire E3 conference because anytime a game was announced, and if you looked over at chat, it was like. Doom card game, Doom Battle Royale, like all this different stuff. Like every game, it was like Last of Us Two Battle Royale, like all of this. And like, oh, we didn't even talk uh, during the Microsoft conference about uh, Gears of War Five. Were you guys excited about Gears of War Five at all? I'm not a huge Gears of War fan, to be totally honest. Uh, it looked fine to me. I, I, I yeah. like the idea that there's a new protagonist, um, and, and to me, it looks like more of Gears of War. It looks like yeah. Gears of War Four. Slightly yeah, better. I didn't even play Gears of War Four. I don't think I've played the last two. Like they had that kind of one off one. Judgment. And then they had four. I never picked up four. Mm. I, I used to like the games. One, two, and three I loved. I don't know. Like and then judgment, it might be burnout. And everybody hated judgment. And then uh, it might be four. burnout. Like I used to love Halo and I just kinda of eventually fell off the train. You know, like Same there's only here. so much of a good thing. Like except for pizza. Pizza's cover. always good. I can only take cover so many times and chainsaw so much shit before I'm like, okay, I want to chainsaw some new shit. I want new chainsaws. Yeah. I want a new cover system, something that makes it a little different. So, yeah, I don't know, man. I feel like they haven't like re in. They tried to reinvent it with that spinoff, but story wise and not necessarily gameplay wise, in my opinion. Yeah. And that game is just like. It's really cool and I love it, but I can only spend so much time in a fucking dull, dark, cr- like just cringy environment. Like, you know what oh, I mean? Like no, cringy in a sense of like <clears throat> everything's just fucked up and so bland. And like at any moment, some big giant locust fuck is going to come popping out of something. And like, you know, like everything just gets so fucked up. Like I want I like a, a balance of that. Like in Fallout, you might see some beautiful, pristine areas, like a colony of people that you know are wanting to keep it clean and rebuild. And then you have your your hillbilly wasteland down yonder of junkyards and yeah, catastrophic, you know, stuff like that. You know, so it, it I probably I'll probably pass on it to be honest. BC, talk to me about Last of Us, man. Last of Us Two got shown, and I gotta say, it looked fucking awesome. I instantly thought of Beastly, by the way. Yeah, I, oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I was ready to cry. Uh, yeah, <laughs> the last of us got shown, and one thing, one thing I'll say is they didn't show any Joe, not one bit of Joe. No, they this. talked about it. He's still alive, apparently, but he, I don't think he's going to be a playable character. They said that the she's entire going to be playable with her only. Yeah, yeah so which is. That's fine. I mean, like narratively, would do what you got to do to move that because the the narrative of the first game was so strong that, like, whatever you guys got to do, like, make yeah. it happen. You know, like, let's we can skip the whole church uh, dancing scene because to me it looked great. It looked like uh, on the same level as maybe Uncharted Four. The the character designs are great. The way they yeah. move, the way they speak, beautiful. The gameplay, let's talk though. about the gameplay. Yeah, the flu the fluidity of the uh, motion capture. And this gameplay is better than I've ever seen. It's in my more. Life. It's more than motion capture. There was there it's was a, new a smoothness to, like she could go from laying on the ground under a car and shooting somebody to standing up, like leaning against the car and then running and picking up a bottle and chucking it at somebody in motions that look fluid and natural Actually, as opposed to natural. like stock animations that somehow have to be bound together by the engine. Yep. It looked amazing and it looked fun. 
Oh, right. I, those, I'm glad you brought that up because those moments of leaning against a car, going prone or kneeling down and then going prone, it seems like between each each step, like a frame or two was missing from the action. You know what I mean? Oh, it really? seems like real like no, I'm just saying like in a lot of games. Like, oh yeah. But in this game, you're totally right. Like it it was it's fluid. very fluid and natural. Like it, it I couldn't agree with you more on that. Like, I, I that was the thing. It, it makes me it makes me like feel like it, Ellie is a char- like a, a character alive. alive. Yeah, it's like yeah. it just draws you in immersively so much more than you know when somebody I, is like kind of janky and around. I, yeah. I watched this tr- uh, reveal at least four or five times, like, and I, I did like slow slow motion to look at the frames and stuff. You're totally right. Uh, there, I didn't see really any aspects of the game other than her picking up that bottle to throw it, where the bottle just kind of levitated off the the brick into her hand. Everything looked. I mean, what, another developer tweeted out that it was fake, and <laughs> so, someone from the Naughty Dog team uh, actually combated him and said, "I can't believe you'd be saying that about our work." But yeah. because it, you know anybody who's a, a video game developer, they know better than we do. It looks almost impossible to make something look that good and you be actually controlling it. Yeah. So what did you think looks... about the part where that guy picks her up in the middle of and, playing and, and threw, threw her, her through the through glass? Yeah. Do you think that's what he was referring to? That maybe that was that that part because that's pretty freaking impressive. It was I, very I, impressive. He I, he just said yeah, and it was fake. Someone uh, left. It's, I don't care about that guy. That guy's that guy. No, they were fuck t- that guy. I want to talk about how exciting that fucking thing looked. <laughs> like, fuck that guy. Fuck that hater. <laughs> Why are we spending time on that? Look, the, there was the uh, the part where she got shot through the shoulder with the arrow, and that arrow persisted, and she had to take care of that wound. I thought was like that's compelling gameplay too, because eventually you got to take care of this. And then the sneaking around in that like old shop, and there's like the I don't know how to call him a boss character, but kind of like that bigger melee it's dude. It was action. so menacing. Oh my god! I can't wait for this game to come out. When is this game coming out, though? I, I, I don't know. I would say not, fall not next soon year. Enough. Not, not you think twenty nineteen? But fall look, I mean, they've been teasing this thing hard for two look at years. The, gameplay, though, Briar. the way that uh, Ellie like kind of moves out of the way when people swing knives and things at her, and like the oh, guy who's the action her. I'm thinking how fast you have to be on your shit to avoid these kind of things, and how she ran into that shop. First, she uh, she did some crafting. She put a bomb on the tip of an arrow. She blew a guy up. That explosion sent shit flying and things falling. One guy fell from the fall. She ran over to him and stabbed him in the neck, right? And then she ran towards another woman and cut her twice and stabbed her in the side of her neck. That side. <laughs> yeah, stabbed him. <laughs> <laughs> and all this stuff was happening in, in fluid animation. And, and yeah, man, it looks to me, it looks so good. It's... It's on the cusp of being too good to be true in my mind, but you know how it's Naughty Dog, and they push. Do you the think this is a three. current gen game? Say what? You think this is a current gen game? I think it's current. Yeah, gen. yeah, I think it when, is when too. You, when, you, when you take into account what Naughty Dog did with the PS3 at yeah. the end of the cycle, I think with, that's with, fair. Uh, with not, with uh, the Last of Us Part One, and they kind of changed the game there. I think this is definitely PS4 Pro, maybe footage we're seeing, and it's unbelievable. I can't Things- wait. And they confirmed, Briar. That there will be factions multiplayer, so there'll be a whole new way to drop bitch bombs and I yeah, pray I won't, to God I won't touch that, that even join once. The in factions. I won't. I won't. Um. <laughs> what a loser! He's so salty about the bitch bombs. He gets so butthurt about it. He's yeah, like, he no, is. no, fuck that, <laughs> fuck that. <laughs> um, I, I, you know, like you said, they built credit up with how good that game looked and played on the PS3. That. Yeah, I mean, I could totally believe this is a PS4 game, you know, especially if it's a PS4 Pro game, because you could still play Last of Us 1 on the PS4, and now it plays in 4K. It still looks really good. It still looks really good. Yeah. Sure does. Uh, Basically, I'm really excited for this game. Like, I love the first game. The second game, though, like, I think... It, it, it looks like, like it's graphically. Be better, well, I mean, part of the thing was the narrative was so fucking good in the first one. Can they back that up? Like at the end of the first one, I was uh, I was under the impression where like they could just never make another Last of Us, and I would be okay with this game being this like narrative that was a one. Yeah. It was a master masterpiece. It was really really good. It was as strongly as I've ever felt for characters in a video game. Really? Yeah, it was really good, man. So like it, it was a little bit worrisome that they're going back to it. 
And can they pull it off again? Can they? Neil Druckmann is a fucking man. You know, can they have like a guy who's as menacing as Dave in the first one? Right? Can they? Can they have a turn that's as good as the turn at the very end with Joel and Ellie at the end? Can they even do that? Right? I bet they can. I think they can. Those guys guys are freaking magicians with what they do with that game, man. They are masters of the craft realm. Like, just a pulling you in. Like, dude, there's very few games that when something is chasing me that I legit get that feeling of something behind you and that angst of I have to get to where I'm going. Like, Destiny doesn't do that for me. Maybe Game 7 of Trials of Osiris, you know what I mean, <laughs> might do that when there's four Game guys seven, breathing three, down my neck, yeah. team shotting the shit out of me. But, like, in a single-player game, it's... Uh, dude, I think the last time I got that feeling was um, the dogs in the original Resident Evil. Oh, jumped to the window. Oh, shit, yeah. Yeah, and like I got attacked by a dog like really bad when I was in fourth grade. I had to get like 198 stitches. First time I ever got stitches, 198. So part of that is why that was so terrifying for me in that game. But like, the tank controls didn't help either. I was going to say the last time I felt that was that game up until the original Last of Us. You know what I mean? There were definitely moments in that game where I, I was like panicking, you know, and. The first I love 10 that. minutes. The first 10 I, minutes. I love that immersive experience, man. I like being put... A lot of people play video games to relax. I like playing video games to be put out of my comfort zone sometimes. I, sure. I want to mention two quick things about it. Um, it seems that uh, Naughty Dog has really gone above and beyond when it comes to the AI system in this game. I don't know if you guys noticed it. You probably did. The way that these characters act and the things that they do to work together... Uh, Towards the end, after Ellie had gotten shot by that woman who was standing on the car with the arrow, and she ran and picked up the bottle and threw it at another lady in the face, and she grabbed her and turned around, and that lady got stabbed, and then there was a guy coming, the big dude. He said, I have eyes. Just out of nowhere, he pulled out his his arrow, and he shot. No, he actually pulled out a gun and shot, a shotgun. And the glass shattered the The door. Particle effects. Oh, that was awesome, yeah. As she ran through, I was like, holy shit. You know, the first time you see it, it's like watching a movie because how fluidly everything works. To me, the the AI, the way it works together and they're talking to each other, trying to figure out what's going on, that's going to be a big, big factor in this game. And also, a big contentious factor of the game is the brutality of it now. Uh, The Last of Us 1 had a lot of brutality, you know, cutting people's throats, beating people in the head with baseball bats, but it seems like they've gone a a little bit further in this game. Yeah, I'd say the whole sequence of Dave was pretty fucking brutal. (laughs) Yeah, 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 that that was brutal, but, you know, when you take into account there's a person who's uh, being hung, they're standing on a, a wood stoop, and then they get disemboweled and hung at the same time, and then someone reaches in their stomach and yanks their intestines out. I hear That's a lot of complaining hard. about that, but that shit just gets me excited to play the game, man. Me too. I'll, I'll be honest yeah, with too. you. I'm not complaining. I, don't think it's <laughs> Look, I hear a lot of complaining about it, but I'm like, I, fuck I it, man. That looks cool. But that kind of shit would happen in, in an environment like that. like that in real life. People are fucking ruthless, and people with that sort of mentality would thrive in a world like that. Like, it's unfortunate, but it's... I'm over here trying to buy, build a utopia. You can stay the fuck out, Willie. Hey, I'm not saying <laughs> I'm that guy. Fucking hanging people from like, trees and dude, shit. In, in, in an apocalyptic survival situation, it's it's me and my family, and you guys are a part of that family. I'm just saying. Like, you know oh, what okay. I mean? Like, okay, we're cool then. Dude, I will get shit done. A lot of people might not like the kind of person I'd become in a world like that because you got to do what you got to do to live, man. Yeah, I've seen I you know. in the crucible. You're willing to do it. Crucible does that to people too. <laughs> All right, so of course that was a big deal. The, yeah. the thing that but I again, heard about. Uh, here's the thing about Sony's press conference again and again. When the fuck is this game coming out? Yeah. Again and again from Sony because. What's the next game you want to talk about? I wanted to, to mention the one that caught, caught me off guard, which was Ghosts? Resident Evil 2. Oh, Resident Evil 2. That game, I'm kind of excited about. Yeah, you kind of? What the hell's wrong with you? you I mean, it's a game right. I played on the PlayStation. Was it PlayStation 1 or PlayStation one. 2? One. I mean, I played that when it came out. So <gasps> I'm, I don't get that excited for remasters and remakes because like, I'd rather do new shit. But this game looks like they're kind of doing like a Resident Evil 4 Thing yes. to Resident Evil Even 2. Further than that, yeah. And so that like, is kind of cool. I'm with you on the, I'm not like down with remakes, but like this game came out so long ago that like 
I'm okay with it being a remake. It, yeah. I don't want a remake of something that came out in 2014. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> no. I want something that... or or a remake of something that was just re remade two years ago. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's what I love about Bethesda. Uh, real quick, sorry, off topic. Um, the little skit that they did with um, the Skyrim, Skyrim very yeah, special edition. They had it on alexa your pager your smart fridge like that shit was really funny that they this, but that really exists too you could actually play it on alexa oh you're my kidding, god right? are you serious it's no, like a I'm not kidding. Talk yeah you adventure. could totally do it yeah that's bullshit no serious? i'm serious kind of yeah they actually now. did it yeah that's amazing how much does it cost does it cost money i think 30 or 40 oh no the alexa i think it's free the game is free alexa you're is like kid, you, you're really really serious yeah man why do I feel like I'm getting trolled just to buy an you're Alexa? Not. And then you're going to be like, tell you him. dumb motherfucker, that ain't on there. <laughs> I think Briar's full of it, man. No, chat, tell him. Chat, yeah, because chat's always honest. <laughs> chat's, <gonna laughs> yeah, chat, chat's got your best oh interest at heart, I guarantee the, the it. The thing that really got me excited, of course, <laughs> I played Resident Evil 2 many times, uh, over and over again on my PS1. You know, that that opening montage and seeing where you start off in the burning road and you're running, weaving through zombies, my mind goes immediately to what that's going to be like now. Of course, they've changed a lot about this game. Uh, a yeah. Lot of the puzzles, a lot of the puzzles are different. A lot of the enemies are placed differently. Uh, but the vi- the the veracity of, of the uh, the zombies and, and the people who you're killing in the game is very frightening to me. You know that my favorite genre is zombies, Brian. Right. And I, w- I watched like a 30 minute uh, uh, play of this game, and seeing the way that these things react is exactly how they do in film. And once they get up on you and you see them looking at you, it's like if Romero was to make a good movie nowadays. Yeah. It's really, really terrifying. And I, oh God, I can't wait to play this. And, and they threw me off so hard with that trailer. It shows you uh, the, the perspective of a, of a rat in a oh, kitchen. Oh, that's right. Yeah. yeah. That was good. And, and I forgot show, about that. It showed a PlayStation. The, it, it, there was a desk and there was a PlayStation there. There was a PlayStation controller and there was canned foods. And you heard this guy saying, you're not supposed to be here. What are you doing? And then all of a sudden, this guy falls down and gets his, gets his neck torn up by a zombie. And that's yeah. when it hit me. And Leon blew his fucking brains out. And I was done. Oh, my God. I, I can't wait for that. It's super exciting. The thing I was most excited about was to see it kind of take that Resident Evil 4 control Four. style. Yeah. But you could kind of move while you're shooting. Yeah. Like So, like, yeah, I mean, I really like Resident Evil 4. And if they lean into some of the silliness of Resident Evil 4, too, like, I'd be really about that, too. Because Resident Evil 4 had a nice mix of horror, but also a little bit of... It didn't take itself too serious. Yeah. And, like, that's something I can get down with. What if they um, take themselves really serious but, and it's terrifying, bro? Like, if I could choose right now between, a, like, a Resident Evil 7 type of game and a Resident Evil 2 remake, man, i go Resident Evil 7 all the way. No way. No way in hell. Um, <laughs> what'd you guys think about Ghost of Tsushima? Speaking of oh, a game that, that up. is that never coming out. Surprise. That's another <laughs> one, Brian, that everybody's saying that they don't think it was uh, current gen, gen hardware. I could a see lot. this one. I could see this one being a... Yeah. PS5 release game. That game, there there was a point. I mean, everybody points to the part where they're having the sword fight under the tree with the red leaves and the yeah. sunset, and the when they're like kind of dancing around doing the sword fight thing, like the leaves are kind of moving along to their. But if you look at the part where he's riding his horse through the wheat field, yeah, that's the part. That, that, that shit is unbelievable. Man, wheat blowing in the wind, you could see the waves of wind, the way that it was blowing across. It was so. Oh god, I, this is gonna sound so hippie. It was so organic. It looked <laughs> like it just real good. Yeah, real good. Like Phenomenal. I didn't know what that game was until. Do you, what do you guys think? Do you guys think that's that's PS4 hardware? If it's PS4, man. They, I mean, look at The Last of Us. You know it's possible. That that struck me as more graphically fidel more graphical fidelity than The Last of Us did. Like it looked. If that looks it is real PS4, good. We are at the very end of its life cycle <laughs> because that's when we start to really tap into the potential of a console. The so guy, if it is, we know the end is coming. Those very, guys that make are making that are the guys that made uh, Second Son. What was that? The infamous Second Son. Infamous. infamous. Second. And that those games right at the beginning of the PlayStation 4's life looked fantastic. Yes, they did. So they, you know, it may did. be that. You know they're taking That's more. That's the last game they made. Right? Or it could be that they're tapped for making a launch game again because Infamous was Ooh, a launch game for PlayStation so Four. Right. 
I don't know, man. That game looked really nice. <laughs> really nice. <laughs> really I, nice. I was actually kind of shocked, guys, by uh, the Spider-Man uh, trailer, the Spider-Man reveal. Uh, it's been a long time since I wanted to play a Spider-Man game. To me, they've all been rinse and repeat, kind of in a way. And uh, the Spider-Man trailer for PlayStation really got me amped and excited to, to delve into this. At least world. it's coming out this year, too. It is. It's coming out in three months. Hey. Yeah. Yeah. Release yeah. date. There we go. And, and it, to me, that looks like a real <laughs> fun superhero adventure it looks like it plays very well uh, it looks like you can go right into animations grab people jump out of the way i mean swinging it just looks like you can really be spider-man and not in a playstation 2 kind of way yeah T- to me I, this looks really amazing i gotta be totally honest like i have no interest in spider-man i've never been a spider-man fan but there is something about this game that swinging from webs through the city looks like a ton of fun dude and it it's actually like looks- what sweet dick really does when he swings through town that's right, man. I'm just swinging through town. But, like, it, I want to do that. Like, I don't even know if I necessarily want to play the game if I just want to, like, web shit and cause <laughs> chaos and, like, you know. And I, I feel like I don't need to know this story to go into it to have a good time. So I'm kind of on the fence about it, man. Like I said, I could care less about Spider-Man, but there is something about this game, about him swinging from webs and stuff like that, that looks like a ton of fun. The thing that about it is you don't really have to know much about Spider-Man lore to get into this. It's a self-contained story. It, it isn't a part of the Marvel Universe. Uh, and so it kind of, it's a, a new Spider-Man, a new Peter Parker. And I guess you, you start from the beginning and you learn about what's going on in the world and you play through it that way. And to me, that's the best way because it brings in everybody, not people who are up to the lore. So that's super exciting to me. I want to hear how confused you guys were. What did you guys think of Death Stranding? No, I don't give a God. shit about that game at all. Oh, really? You don't care about that game at oh, all? Oh, God. Are you fucking mind? I was mildly interested because they were doing these, like, fucked up trailers. And, like, this is really fucked up and kind of worth my time just to, like, pay attention to. And then they showed off Backpack Simulator. I was just like, nope, I'm out. I sign out. Okay. <laughs> the, the backpack looked ridiculous. It They're just showing up parts of the world. It Which one? Like, they showed like 40 backpacks. Yeah. It literally looked like the end game is going to be what backpack you got. You know what I mean? Like, and I, dude, it, There's it more looked really cool. Though. When we like, wasn't there like, correct me if I'm wrong, but like we were seeing a baby being born yeah, it from its baby. perspective at the beginning that shit was fucked up like that. no 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 it, it was inside of, of of the mouth remember oh that's what it was, it was okay. the, the one that like tapped his ass, ass and yeah. then he like gave you the finger or something yeah that was or no, some he weird gave you a thumbs shit. up yeah, yeah. That Those was some, babies. That's, that's the shit that I'm like, yeah, okay, you're you're getting me, you're getting me, that's and really then you show me trippy. backpack simulator. I'm like, ah, fuck, never mind. Yeah, the backpacks look ridiculous. <laughs> you have to like, know why though. You can't dismiss it just out of you don't like the way the backpacks look or how many backpacks. It's not that I don't we like how the backpacks know. look. It's that I don't know how into walking across massive distances I am. <laughs> Well, and that's what I, they showed I, I, me. See, look, that's me, like so they didn't show any gameplay except for this dude walking. <laughs> like to me, you know, Kojima. Ko- Ko- Kojima, <laughs> he's already a proven track record to me when it comes to, to, to gaming in, sure. in general. Uh, but the stuff that they did show, these things that are coming, how these these infants are somehow intertwined with them to let you know they're coming. The ways that you can find out they're coming. These mystery chicks. These these character models. All these questions, I have to know what this game is about. That's the game that my wife was the most excited about. After she saw that, she was like running around. Oh, God, when is this game coming out? Another, another She's question. She's excited about Norman Reedus. All right. Like we I'm all. I'm a little are. excited about Norman Reedus, too. He's <laughs> a handsome guy. There was a statue of Everybody's him. Everybody's like, oh, they're killing Rick in The Walking Dead. I, I'm like, but Norman Reedus listen, is man, still there, right? I got to take, take offense to that. He looks nothing like me. So if we're in bed and she says, oh, Norman, I'm going to say, hey, I'm a, I'm a few shades darker, lady. What if, and, what if what if she and said I don't oh, have a beard right now. But you were okay with Kratos because he was the god of war. If she called you Kratos, yes, she'd be like, Hell yeah, I'm Kratos. Like you know, I'll be like, tapping that ass like a guy. Oh <laughs> playing the drums. Yeah. Uh, uh, they had a get- statue of him at, at E three and uh this guy that I watched in Mr. Moon's house was walking around doing IRL and dude, they had this statue, this life size statue of Norman Reedus there. And it looked like at any moment that he was just going to turn and be like, gotcha, <laughs> like it's actually me. Like it looked so oh, damn really? real. Yeah, it was Where incredible. Where does one get a life-size statue of Norman Reedus? I want a life-size statue of you guys. Oh, oh that'd be dope. Dude, Dude, I, I wouldn't like, even you guys right here. Be like, sup, y'all. I wouldn't like, even <laughs> need you guys to do the podcast. We could all, I could just have you sitting here, and I could tell you guys what, what I think you should think. Damn, <laughs> 
That's Happy right, Beastly. That's a very good Beastly. point. I'm glad you agree with me once again. <laughs> <laughs> Hmm, this is going somewhere. Yeah, going. I'm sure it is, man. Um, but yeah, man, when I saw that game, the questions that I have, these people who they, they they kind of leaked and introduced in these trailers, his wife had showed her in the pictures, and of course that was her turning around at the end of the game. I have so many questions, and this world is so intriguing that you have to be insane to not want to know what the fuck is happening. What are these things that are that are chasing people? Yeah, what, what is walking around I don't know. on his hands? Basically, you say you'd have to be you? insane to not wonder what is going on here. Except that I feel like you'd have to be insane to follow what's going on with most of his game. Yeah, <laughs> so, I feel like I make more sense out of an acid trip. Yeah, <laughs> I've been down like, this road before. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Metal Gear Solid Two was well, pretty, pretty. I mean, uh, pretty fucking yeah, crazy. Sons of Liberty. It's pretty yeah. fucking crazy. Yeah, but I'm excited about that game. And uh, let me see. What is – I think that's all. That's really all Sony talked about. They did a very long, stretched-out uh, E3 this year. They showed a game called Control that's made by Remedy. Yeah, people made, are excited about that, but I didn't see much there. Yeah, I mean, it looked like um, – it kind of looked like the, the game they made on the Xbox. I actually mentioned it in, in the reaction video. What is it called, uh, the one I don't like? Remedy's game for the Xbox One? I don't remember. That, I don't remember you ever not liking a game. This yeah. is bullshit. Moving on to Nintendo. <laughs> Hold on. And, and, Before we talk about Nintendo in the one game that they showed. They oh. Oh. I want to take a moment to thank our sponsor, On Air PC. On Air PC, if you're a streamer or if you're looking to get into podcasting or, or whatever you need to do with a computer, On Air PC is who you need to call. On Air PC is all about helping you get started in streaming, podcasting, or gaming. Let us help you build your dreams today. You can give them a call at 330-850-1525. We need a jingle. BC, can you come up with a jingle? Like 330-850-1525. Come up with a jingle like that, but a little bit more hood. And Very also nice. with tune. <laughs> Yeah, and also, we'll auto-tune that shit later. Auto-tune that it. shit up. Chop it and screw it. Seriously, if you're looking to get into podcasting or uh, game streaming, you need a PC, you need somebody to help you out, maybe you don't know the specs or the software that you need to get started, On Air PC are the people to help you out. Contact them on Twitter or over the phone at 330-850-1525. Most now, helpful let's talk about the made. one game, Nintendo. Aside, I'm not trying to do the, the, the written advertisement. But as someone who bought a PC from On Air PC, one of the most pleasant and awesome experiences I've ever had spending my money. I felt uh, very well informed. I felt like I, I got a great deal, better than I could have gotten anywhere else. And Check this out. BC, he's going down to Guardian Con, and he's going to build a computer that he's going to give away. And he said to me that he's going to build it with his feet. He's going to build a whole computer with his feet. And that's it. That's going to be a funky computer. Oh, man, I need to make a, uh, some, some <laughs> a funky PC. <laughs> funky PC. Why is it funky? Oh, you'll like it. I hope it's water cool because you, know, you wash your feet while you're making the PC. <laughs> Holy shit. All right. Tell us about uh, Nintendo's one game that they showed. They didn't show one game, but Nintendo <laughs> probably had some of the biggest news that affected immediate that, that went into effect immediately at one of these uh, conferences. Uh, the big news for me, of course, I'm a huge Smash Brothers fan. And Smash Brothers Ultimate, they showed that, has every character from every Smash Brothers game ever in the game. I can't wait till this game launches uh, to be able to take Smash on the go. And it works with GameCube controllers, once again. Mm -hmm. I don't know how they're able to do this wizardry, but it's true. To me, that was probably my most exciting bit of news. What but about Brian, a GameCube controller makes it so good for Smash? Every time I hold that thing, I just get arthritic pain. You'll, you'll never understand. I'm, I'm trying to. Like, help me. under. Do I need, like, to, to take, like, some prescription strength to leave before I play? Or, like, what, <laughs> what am I missing? I'll figure your hand. You must have small hands. No, my hands are of relative good size. Here, hold yours up. Hold, hold it up. Yeah, see? Oh, man. They're they're skinny but long. Yeah. Know what I'm we saying? Need, we, we need something. Okay, where's your PlayStation controller? It's right behind you, but mine is... Oh, here's mine. Get that hold PlayStation it, controller. Hold it vertically like this. Okay. Look at that. Big old man hands. Oh, Big old man. Oh, mine is wow. The bottom Holy controller. shit. Mine is yeah, touching. flip your controller around. Flip your controller around. Who, me? Yeah, yeah you sure. got small hands, Wilson. No, I don't. 
All right, let's. Now put Mine's it at your the thumb. bottom. Yours is like right here. Yeah, yeah. I don't know your hands. You guys let me know if Wilson has small hands. I got small hands. Anyway, <laughs> I, Smash Brothers is cool. I I'll use a controller that doesn't make me feel like it just got run over by a garbage truck, which the is like a way to play Smash Brothers is with a GameCube controller. You Not true. Understand. I would suggest the only way to fuck your hands up is with a GameCube controller. Uh, but their presentation, like, my God, I now know how to do every move for every character in the game. Every single move. <laughs> like, is this a presentation or is this a live read of the instruction manual? What is going <laughs> on? It was. It's going to be a little fucking crazy. Uh, uh, but a lot of people who are hardcore into the Smash Brothers world really appreciate it because they changed Fair enough. all that they made in the game. Uh, but you know what? For Nintendo, I'll, I'll give them very, very... Uh, very celebrated kudos by saying that they launched and released Fortnite on the Switch as they revealed it. To me, that was a big deal. Uh, I downloaded it on the Switch and played it, <laughs> and it, do- it got 2 million downloads in 24 hours. And that was a pretty big get for Nintendo. Well, there are talking- a lot of children who like fighting games in the world. Fortnite, Briar. <laughs> oh, I'm Not sorry. I thought we Smash. were talking about Smash Brothers. So I was trying to make a, a kitty fighting game <laughs> joke. <laughs> Speaking of lots of kids, Fortnite coming to the Switch. Um, I've downloaded it. I haven't played it yet on the Switch, but it runs really well, and it, it's crossplay sure with the Xbox. I mean, it okay. can run on a cell phone. Switch is as powerful as a cell phone. Right? Yeah, it can run on a cell phone for about five and a half seconds, and then before your battery you dies, and you need well, to plug well, it in. Well, let me just say this: uh, this is on, get on that the ROG yesterday. phone, huh? Uh, on P- on iOS. Fortnite is getting making one million dollars a day just from being on that platform. It's very very popular. Um, and uh, the can fact we that like can... sue them for something? Like, isn't there like somehow we can get some of that money? <laughs> I, I it, no, wasn't that Fortnite? Wasn't that our idea? Don't you think? Yeah, <laughs> Fortnite made so much money that next year they're giving everyone a hundred dollars on their tax return. <laughs> like, <laughs> Basically, don't you remember when we were playing uh, Fortnite, like Save the World Edition? And we're like, they should make Save a. Uh, yeah, it was like PUBG. This game would be. Sad. Yeah, we should make. They should make a PUBG like this. Remember we Dude, said that they stole your idea. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I do remember that actually. Yo, we gotta Fort- call Epic DT Games. Luna. Come on, <laughs> Come on over. <laughs> I got five kids to feed. I'm like Benny from Total right. Recall. Um, so, to me. To me, nice ball, by Nintendo the way. That's a good one. did okay, but you know, <laughs> they had just a, a few other games that they uh, they kind of showed off. Hollow Knight, Fortnite, Killer uh, Queen Black, Overcooked 2. These are kind of smaller indies. Uh, Fire oh, Emblem. You know, speaking of Hollow Knight, we didn't even talk about Ori in the, not the Blind Forest. I did mention it, and you, you said, fuck it. I, I did? mentioned it at the beginning of the show. Ori? Right? Oh, yes. man, I love the first one. It was wonderful. You, you loved Ori and the, uh, the Blind Forest? Really? Oh, it was a wonderful game. It's a beautiful game. Yes, it is. It it's played really well. Looking. Like I didn't know it was going to be a Ori Metroidvania. The Will of the Wisps. Will of the Wisps. That's right. I didn't know it was going to be a uh, Metroid-style game when I first started playing it, but that's what it yes, ended it up is. being. It's, well, it's fucking it's awesome. I can't wait for the second one. Yeah, Hollow Knight, for some reason, Hollow Knight brought me back to... <laughs> it, it does have that kind of vibe to it, to where it's a very, like visually beautiful and stimulating game. It like, looks even I, better I than watched, the first one. Uh, KJ Hovey play Hollow Knight when he was kind of taking a hiatus from Destiny and it was super relaxing to watch, man. It's a good but, game. like made you want to keep playing it and like see what happened next. It, it's pretty cool. I'll definitely be playing it. Yeah. I mean, that's a real games, good game. They really make a lot of sense on, on the on the Switch. You know, be able to take those yeah. on the go and have little pocket size experiences, console quality as well. Yeah. Uh, they they also showed um uh Wolfenstein the new order. Oh, that's right. They yeah. did. It's no, it's not new. Is I it? want to see newer games. Cut like it's cool that like the Nintendo's doing this stuff. They're getting with, them like a year late. Yeah. Yeah, but like better late than never. I'm just hoping that at some point they catch up, and they can start Get having a band date with their competition. Correct. Yeah, I mean to me but, as well. Like I, you know, I have it on PC. It's great. I haven't completed it on PC. And I'm thinking I want to just slow down and wait and finish it on, on the Switch to see what that experience is. You know what, basically? Just put that shit on easy and get through it. Because the story I just can't. is so I good. Like I'm pussying out, Briar. The story <laughs> is so good in that game, but the gameplay itself is... Mm, very nah. hard. Uh. It's very it's very <laughs> difficult, Briar. It's difficult and not very fun. 
But put that shit on easy and just get through the story because the story is fucking batshit crazy and awesome. Every time I put it on easy, Kate says, don't be a bitch like Briar and Gary. Go back to normal. She's got Damn. a point. She's got a point. Damn. Smart woman. <laughs> Yo, something but how much time are you going to put into that game, you know? I'm sorry, Wilson. <laughs> something that I'm kind of excited about and, like, I'm not, like, super thrilled, but, like, the Mario Party. I just want to, yeah, like, cool. play, like, drinking games with my friends and do Mario Party. That'd be fun. You know, you have some drinks. Games? That, too. Is there a smoking games? Like, is that a thing? I would imagine it would just apply with drinking. Yeah. Like, so like, every time, smoking. like every time I throw this ball in a cup, you gotta take a toke. Yeah, I gotta take a ball right. <laughs> yeah. Oh Look fuck! At him. He's, he's so yeah. serious. Uh, today, Wilson brought the six footer. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you gotta stand on a ladder. Stand up, yeah. and you need a friend to light it for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we put a mattress under the ladder just in case. <laughs> Because we're cool. <laughs> yeah, a big I, ass I grill really lighter. Like, this is like the Mario Party game that I've always dreamt about. You know, I've had a few on the 64 and, and going back years ago, uh, but playing on the Switch, it looks like they've really revolutionized revolutionized uh, revolutionized it for this particular console. And uh, I, you know, I got kids. I got a woman that likes to play with children, and uh, I'm one of those children. I think it, it might actually be really fun on the Switch. Every time they make a new Mario Party, I just say, I want a new WarioWare. Ah, oh, that uh, was the shit. Yeah. Oh, it sure was. Wario gets the quick. shit end of the stick all the time now. Yeah, yeah him and Waluigi. Is he going to be in that fun. new tennis game? I did yeah, see that. They, they did show He that. is? Yeah. Wario's in it? Okay, he's my character. I'm buying that game. Just decided that. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> yeah. It's like we're all buying Mario tennis then. You know, Wario can't fuck with Mario. I mean, he's just... Go fuck yourself. Guy. Wario is way cooler than Mario. No, the hell I always that. picked Wario. He's a in, villain in, with a heart of gold, man. Have yeah. a cape. That cape is like Mario Kart 64. <laughs> Wario was the best character, and let me tell you why. Uh huh. Because tell me you why. Had, you had the lightweight class, uh -huh. and you had the heavyweight class. Yeah. Wario was right in the middle, so you could still ram into all the the lightweight classes and make them spin out. Yeah. But Bowser and Donkey Kong couldn't hit you and make you like spin oh, out shit. and stuff like that. That's some that. next so, level Mario Kart right there. Like, I didn't dude, know that. I'm like, saying I'm like a professional. To being obese. Also, he goes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a Wario. I'm a gonna win. <laughs> I'm a Wario. You got it. You got it. <laughs> I totally want. I want. I want to play Wario in Mario Tennis. I'm buying that game just so I can play Wario. If he's an wow. unlocked character, I'll get to the point where I have to unlock him and then play play with him. Or pay five bucks to skip it. I'll no, play with I, you. Hell yeah! We can play I, some now, Mario. Now I know that the Switch's online capability actually works. And in Fortnite, they just did an update where you don't need to use your phone app to communicate with people. You actually can speak right to the Switch's microphone. Pretty <laughs> fucking cool. I would just use Discord anyway. Yeah, fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> just hold it in your hand. And say, "Hey, what's going on, everybody?" Nintendo was <laughs> probably you, like, you, "Nintendo was probably like, look, whatever voice service we put out, nobody's gonna fucking use it anyway. They're just gonna use Discord or whatever." Like, so. I mean, I don't see why everything should just go off Discord. They should just put Discord on the They should just put Discord on the Switch. <laughs> this is slightly off the subject, but to yeah. me, it made, it made no sense for Nintendo to uh, even tout a phone app for your Switch when you can just use your fucking phone to call people. Maybe you don't want to get... Well, yeah. Well, yeah, just, but at the same time, if you're playing with a stranger, you don't want to be like, yo, hit yeah, your but, digits, dog, I'm going to call you. And we'll, who we'll plays play with strangers on a Nintendo console? you got to give them your fucking oh, social security Nintendo. number just to add them as True. a friend. <laughs> so true. it's like, uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, you know this motherfucker, so they got your phone number. <laughs> you got to scan your yeah. hand, you got to do a retinal scan, you got to do a piss code. test. <laughs> Did you guys, uh, I know it wasn't E3, but it was happening at the same time. Uh, did you guys see that new uh, Asus ROG phone from uh, yeah. Computex? I heard about it, but I didn't see it. Uh, it's got some cool things to it. It's, uh, it it's a really powerful phone, right? I don't know if it's water-cooled. I think it's water-cooled, Briar. All right, but it's it's got a clip-on fan. I know that. And then, like, the so the back... It can like cool itself with this like clip on fan. And then you can also you can clip it into a controller so you could play games with the controller. It's and switch. then you could also click it into like a dual screen kind of function that looks basically like a DS. And that's got a controller as well. But the top screen that comes with the actually I don't know if it's the top screen or the bottom screen that's the actual phone, but the one screen is your gameplay. The other screen can be used for 
maybe live streaming or like doing like something like that. It's a really cool phone. I mean, it has a, it has I don't know how many of those things are going to sell because I bet it's going to be crazy ass expensive and the accessories are going to be crazy expensive too. But like, if you really want a top end phone and you play video games on your phone, like I could see people getting into that and then streaming. Like if you want to stream some phone games, like they have accessories built in for it. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Probably a really but, good phone for just IRL streaming in general. Yeah, probably. You have, to have, you have to have these like big backpacks now. You know what I mean? And that's more about your Wi-Fi, your internet connection than like your battery life and stuff like that. But a lot of these phones can't handle <clears throat> long Periscope sessions or long, Yeah. Um, uh, what is it? Uh, stream labels, I think, has a mobile app or something to stream off Twitch. And yeah. If you got a pretty powerful phone, man, and all you really need is battery life. <clears throat> I mean, that could cut back on potentially having to lug around a big ass backpack full of stuff just because a lot of people do that. They go to these E3 and Guardian Con and all this different stuff, and they like to IRL stream it. And Lucky and Butway did that from uh, the Destiny 2 reveal stream, and they had a really cool setup, like with a. Uh, yeah. Kind of like a selfie stick, but like batteries yep. and a phone and like extra lenses, I believe, on the... It was a cool setup. Didn't he even have lights somehow or something? Uh, I don't I thought... remember exactly. It's been a while and, um, yeah. you know, there's a lot I, going on that day. You know, Briar, I, when that, I got that news, I saw that video about the Republic of Gaming phone. I wanted to know if they were going to uh, potentially have things made exclusively for the phone. Because if you're just playing just traditional uh, mobile go games on this phone, you probably won't notice much of a difference because these game these games are usually made with a cap in mind. It's well, like right so now, now there's there's a couple of phones that have like the faster frame rate, right? The Razer phone Razor, has it, yeah. and now the ROG phone. I think the Razer phone is still a faster frame rate than the or uh, Hertz, you know, like than the. The ROG is 90 ROG. Frames. Yeah, I think that Razer is 120. But 120. still, like as these things happen, more developers throw support in, and like like on PC, you know, you target 30 or 60 for most phones. But well, if they got you know if they got more power, fuck it, let them turn off the frame rate cap. You know. I mean, I'd I'd be interested to see it compete with maybe the Switch because it looks like that's what they're going for. It looks yeah. like, you know, it's the mobile Tegra X chip is probably in the same range as the dedicated GPU that's in this phone. So, I mean, I want to see if they're going to be able to maybe port games to this thing. And if you plug up your controller to it, you'd be able to play the same way you can on the Switch on the go. And if that's the yeah. case, it would give the thing a lot more, to me, uh, notoriety and people will be more excited about it the problem with portable consoles for me has always been that i i just don't want to like i don't have room in my pockets for like another thing right like i'm already carrying around a phone if the phone could play some games on occasion when i actually want to pull out which is rare when i want to when Very. i'm on the go and want to pull out and play a game that'd be nice you know when i'm like when it's, I'm out and about, it's because I can't be at home playing games. Yeah, I will point. play I'm games. I'm just trying to get home. <laughs> just trying to get fucking home, man. If this phone has a GPS, I can tell me how to get home quicker so I can turn on my console now we're talking. But, like, that's the thing, right? Like, if I'm out doing something, it's because I've put it off to the last minute from playing video games all day. And, you know, like, it, it is cool, like, seeing at an airport, if I traveled, if I flew in airplanes, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, I would be all about it it's the but only time on, i've brought my switch anywhere is when i've traveled when on i'm airplane. on an airplane though i'm so concerned about freaking dying that i don't even want to play a video game <laughs> like you know what I, I mean? i'm, I'm just like, like you guys right <laughs> i take my switch to work with me in my office every morning it's sitting in my bag and whenever i do get downtime i look at the bag and then i turn on my phone it's just like that it's like if i have the option the phone gives me a lot more you know options than just playing the switch playing skyrim or you know, yeah. playing, you know, one of these other games I have. And when I do, like, if I'm like, if I, I try and live my life in a way, I try and like plan things out in a way that I don't have to spend a lot of time waiting around for shit because it drives me crazy. But like, there's certain things that are unavoidable. Like, occasionally you have to go to the DMV and you have to wait for two hours at the DMV because that's what the DMV is all about. So, like, in that situation, it's nice to have like a stupid game on your phone that you don't necessarily have to put a lot of attention in, but is a little bit distracting. But like, I even then, it's like I don't want to be playing 
Fortnite at the DMV, right? I don't want to get so immersed into a game at the DMV that I might forget like that they called my number or something like that, mm-hmm. right? So like a, like a little like tower defense game is much more suitable yeah. to that kind of environment for me. Maybe on a plane, I could play a little bit of Zelda on the plane because I got like some time, like I got four hours. But I don't know. Like mobile gaming has never really appealed to me because of that. It's like mobile mobile games have been always more like a couch thing. I don't know. You, I, I, you give me the option to grab to go get to walk up to the counter and get my license renewed, or grab that golden bolt action sniper and get some dank scopes. I'll be like, "Nah, you go ahead of me, man." Like, I'm, I'm, about, <laughs> yeah. to, I'm about to get this victory royale. Watch this, like. <laughs> but it's like, I mean, I, I we made a decision. We were no longer going to any restaurants that don't don't take reservations because we're so fucking sick of, sick of waiting in line for 45 minutes to go to a restaurant. So we're just gonna. Oh, you don't take our reservations, so we're not coming. We're only going to go to restaurants and take reservations, which I think was a good move because I also think they have better food. <laughs> I think it ended up being like a side benefit too. <laughs> it's a better experience, like going in when you're hungry, sitting down to eat, and yeah, getting your food instead of being, you know, like you said, sitting there waiting, oh. and then they sit you down to your table and you wait ten more minutes because they're busy. They bring you that bread and that salad though, just to you know keep you keep you smiling. We had a, like a run there. I swear to God, it was for nearly a year where every time we went any place, it was like forty five minute wait. I was like, fuck, man. It's like it makes you not want to go out, right? Right. But like, yeah. so we we made this policy: reservations only. And it's like you just walk in, you sit right down, you have a beer in your hand within two minutes, and you're good to go, right? The world is a better place with beer in your hand. <laughs> it is. <laughs> I thought you were going to say reservation. That too. That too, I guess. That by, too. By association of the beer, though. Yeah. Right. <laughs> by proxy. And, and that's our thoughts on E3 2018. Make sure you guys let us know what you thought about E3. Fuck, is the show over? Holy shit. Who yeah, won E3 2018? I want to know from you guys in the comments. Let us know now. Let us know on YouTube. Who do you think won? My personal 2020 won. I, I think I think Microsoft got down this year. Uh, the people Bethesda in the future won. won. You think Bethesda won? I think Bethesda won. Because they 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 release a game that I'm excited about that's coming out. This that's year. coming out this year. Also, I've never been as excited about a, a fucking phone yeah, game as Microsoft I am about that too, Skyrim. Though. They did. That Microsoft. Skyrim phone game was kind of fucking cool looking. Yeah. yeah, I'm not a big card game guy, but I do love like the Skyrim. Wait, is that a card game? I, I thought it was a. What's that? I thought that was like a like a Skyrim game, but on your phone. I didn't think no, it was a I card was game. A, I thought it was a card game. No, 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 no Briar, you're right. You're right. That okay, game, that one's not out yet, Briar. But uh, yeah, that's that, not that, out yet. Right but there. it looked kind of cool. cool. Yeah. yeah. You I'll have to rewatch that then. The I totally yeah. must have been. It's like a full Skyrim type experience on your phone. Corridors, you can go different places and talk to people and fight and do magic. I must have busted out the six footer during that because I, sure, I, totally... right <laughs> I hope you put that mattress under the uh, under the ladder, man. Yeah. Get stoned safely. <laughs> stoned safely. How do you get the six footer in that bus? Is the question. Oh, that's dude, why you need the bus. Yeah, that's why you need a bus. <laughs> so you don't see fucking. You don't see rolling around in a sedan with a six footer hanging out the window. Yeah. You get a fucking bus. And do it proper, like. <laughs> yeah, right. Safety first, man. You don't. You, you slide wanna, it next to the muffler so, when you drive around. You just don't want to like take somebody out with a six footer when you drive by and it hanging out the window. Man stabbed by six foot drive by bong killing. <laughs> It was javelined by a javelined six footer. By a six foot ball. <laughs> Nobody knows the identity of the driver, uh, but they did see a graphics sticker on the car. <laughs> yeah, graphics. Dude, that's old school. <laughs> nice, dude. Uh, what, do you, what do you think, guys? I think, uh, what are we going to do next week? I mean, we kind of used all our material this week. Should we take like uh, another like three week break? Oh, so. um, <laughs> I'm really like. Let me say this. I'm really happy to see you guys. Whenever we we have our hiatuses, it always hits me hard. I, I need to see you guys usually weekly or biweekly of the latest. Three weeks is uh, my my heart can barely you, take it, it no more. So I'm really it happy to be back. When I'm we happy don't to talk, talk to everybody and, and do the show. I uh, Brian, whenever I'm speaking, I can't hear you. I hate that. I'm sorry. Say it again. 
I said it gets weird when we don't talk. It starts off with, hey, Beastly says, hey, you guys still around? Hey, what's going on? And within a week, you're getting, like, dick pics, and it just gets fucking weird. <laughs> if nobody's responding, I appreciate it. Appreciate it, but weird. <laughs> appreciate it, but weird. Also, I realize that you have an Atlanta anaconda, but if you could get it all in one, one picture, picture I'm sorry. five He's like panoramic. sort of fisheye lenses. <laughs> yeah, sort of fucking panoramic. <laughs> Briar, I'm sure Briar's like, is this like chocolate brittle? What is this? And at the very end, oh, that's beast. <laughs> it's like six pictures later, I'm scrolling, I'm scrolling, I'm scrolling. Oh, it's a dick. <laughs> oh, yeah. Jake, Jake brought up something good. We should try to get our yard sale thing done this week. Oh, fuck. We, oh, oh yeah. man. We're All back. right, let's we'll do the yard sale. Week. Do the yard sale. All right. Yeah. yeah. I was actually uh, at uh, the flea market when my uncle was here. And uh, I looked hey. around. And Any I walked into a place, and this guy had video games, but you won't fucking believe this idiot. He had an Xbox 360 for $340. $340. What? And he had he had an Xbox One for $220. What and the was fuck was that, he on? Look, he had PlayStation 1 discs that were in bad condition for $25 each. He had a lot of shit. He had, like, every old console. I think he had a Dreamcast for $200. I was like, and he look, he had a PlayStation 4. For three hundred and ten dollars, and then I said, "You do know at Walmart, this is two forty nine." I showed it to him. The Walmart app. He said, "Yeah, but they charge twenty dollars shipping." I said, "Time for me to go, sir." So That's even with still shipping, less than. <laughs> you he just gotta walk away from those he said, people. He said, dude. He, he said, "People buying, people buying." And my uncle said, "There's a sucker born every day." <laughs> right. I mean, yeah. And so, and That's a good point. Hell out of there, man. I couldn't believe it. I was looking for something. The guy had everything, but. Everything that he had is still there right now because he ain't sold shit. I tell you that. He ain't sold Wow. Nothing. That's crazy. Man, All right. So crazy. next week, 4 p.m. Eastern time, we'll be back here. Uh, also, we're going to uh, – Beastly, you've been doing a great job with the uploads to um, Podbean, Podbean uh, which – I got to tell you, everybody is super appreciative of, uh, I mean, when we actually make a podcast. Thank you, <laughs> yeah. Thank you, man. Like you, you've been knocking that out of the park. It really, really been great. Problem, my friend. Uh, somebody's got to carry that weight that fucking Gary left behind. Gary Diaz. Miss you, buddy. Love you. Gary, we love you, man. You have complete strangers that I've never met in my entire life calling me Sweet Dick Willie. Yes. Well the power of Gary. <laughs> the power of Gary oh. Diaz. Oh. The power of Gary compels you. <laughs> Tell it from the mountain. <laughs> All right. We'll see you next week. <laughs>